Absolutely did. Like, and then they had Scientologists go in and buy them. And then they, right. they, had, they, they had them sold back. And then they did all yeah. kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. It's actually right. in, in um, it's actually in Jeff Hawkins, uh, Jefferson Hawkins, who was a guy I worked with in the eighties. Uh, Cause I, I worked for the church before I went to gold. I was hired to direct TV right. commercials for Dianetics in the eighties. And Jefferson was the one who designed the whole campaign, which put the book back on the bestsellers list. And he's detailed in his book. Oh, here's somebody said, uh, OBG. Yeah. OBG Foster said, yes. New York Times gets data from bookstores and probably also Amazon now. Right. Independent bookstores probably didn't report to them. Yeah, I don't think they do Amazon, but I, I, there are, maybe they do now. I don't know, but it's, it's, it, it, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a sample of bookstores and how whatever's selling that's there. Cool. Yeah, that's what it is. Come so. On. so you just need to know how to market effectively. It's not like, a yeah, like if I had the resources, if, if I had right. the resources, I could probably get my book on it best. Right. You know, right. That's fa I didn't. So what? Yeah. So well, I guess we're all talking about what was that approach? What was that campaign? Was it simply a bunch of buybacks? Was it you know? Oh, did you work on advertisements for it? Were they, oh, you mean well, you mean the the legitimate one or the illegitimate one that came later? Both, both. The, I mean, I'm talking about the '80s when it was a bestseller. Like, how do you guys put it back on the bestseller chart? Uh, you know, was it? Um, was it a, was it simply buying back books, or was there a concern? Was that the moment when you saw everybody on the subway asking about the personality test? Is that when that movement began, or is it? Yeah, it's fascinating. Kind of. I mean, kind of. Here's right. what happened: was I don't know about the illegitimate one. I really right. I don't know. It's in Jeff's book. I didn't memorize it. The, the, okay. the, way, they, the way they gamed the system to get it back right. on, the time. like they would literally buy this shit. Uh, but the original <laughs> one, basically. Uh, so this was at the birth of cable TV. This is in the mid eighties. Right. Cable, okay. cable sure. TV was the wild, wild West. I mean, people were going to jail, like, like for real, people went to prison <laughs> who were doing like infomercials and public access. Uh, yeah. A lot of famous stars got their start in raunchy public access programs. So yeah, 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 yeah. It was crazy. Like, remember, re remember, yeah. but that's not all Bob. Remember Bob, but that's <laughs> yeah. not all yeah. Bob. One of those guys went to prison. Yeah. Uh, and then there was funny. there was like the sham wild guy who apparently had some sure. Vince Offer. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Was, he so a he was, was Vince Offer a Scientologist, dude? Yeah, he, he was he'd done Scientology. Yeah. That was later. <laughs> We're talking about the 80s. That was the 90s. Yes. Yeah, the sham wild guy was a Scientologist. That's I had no idea. I know That's I did crazy. know that he had a bunch of drug arrests and had quite yeah, the, okay, so uh, yeah, so this is we're way down a rabbit hole, Dodge. Yeah, do you remember, well, do you, do problem, you remember Kevin Trudeau, the vitamin guy, the diet guy? Yes, he was a scammer who also went to jail. That was a big yeah, fraud. They they sure. kicked him out of Scientology. He was he actually, was a Scientologist? Yeah, he was he was the biggest TV fraud guy for six years. Hundreds biggest of millions fraud. of dollars. But, you know, no Scientology, Scientology has to have a cable or internet fraud. I mean, now they got like, uh, they <laughs> well, got like, sense. you go from him to Grant Cardone and they're both. Yeah, exactly. Oh no. So I have this, I have a friend, I'm not going to mention him. He's still in Scientology. So he's not, we're not friends anymore. Okay. But he, yeah, well, uh, okay. he was an infomercial producer, marketer, very bright guy. And, uh, Kevin Trudeau's got into, found out about Dianetics and Scientology. So Kevin Trudeau used to sell all these, all this different stuff. So he decided to include Dianetics in all the, in all of his, <laughs> amongst his offerings. Right. So they couldn't, and then he got in some kind of legal trouble and he was doing uh, Scientology services at flag and they kicked him off the base. Really? And they didn't like, oh, yeah, that they, was, they the, banned the, him. The he was like, he was too big a wow. scammer. Well, if he had been, but I tell That's you, a lot for Scientology to say that. Yeah. But he wasn't, he, if he had been making a ton of money and was donating the way Grant Cardone does, right? Um, he he would they wouldn't have kicked him out because they need the right. cash. Right, right. There's funny Jen Jen sells as Chris Jenner had this dare stepper infomercial that was before my time. But I heard about <laughs> that. And Ron Pipe, yeah, Ron Pipe, oh, yeah. But Ron Popeil, Ron Popeil, if you ever read uh, Gla uh, Nor uh what's his name, uh, Gladwell, uh, Malcolm Gladwell's, Malcolm, yeah. yeah, his stories about. Ron, I mean, Ron Papil was the real deal. He Did was third Malcolm generation. Did write about that person? I had to look oh, it yeah, up. absolutely. He, I character. think he wrote about it not in uh, Outliers. Oh, where did he write about it? I mean, Ron Propeel was a third generation 
you know, selling, setting stuff up at the, at the Jersey shore and selling <laughs> kitchen stuff. And like, right. they knew how to do it. And, and, and I never had one, but apparently that kitchen rotisserie was just like really a good product. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. no, people that had it like swore by it. Like they were eating roast chicken like twice a week. Wow, wow, <laughs> anyway, well, like, well, travel is probably a good thing to, to get, honestly. Yeah. But anyway, to get this whole thing on track, if that's actually possible. So what yeah, happened? Right. It was the early days of cable TV, and right. nobody knew how to buy media on cable TV. Nobody okay. knew how to buy ads. You could buy ads. Okay. And the amazing thing about it is you could target those ads. You could very anybody demographic. Anybody could buy ads at that time. I anybody could buy ads. Well, any, right. anybody with money can buy ads now. I mean, you do right. need a broker. You know, like right. Scientology uses an outside well, broker. And I guess there's no F e FCC, I guess, in cable. Obviously. No, they hadn't shown up yet. It, it, it's the right. Wild West. Okay. It so, really was. Fascinating. No, no, no. Uh, but here's how it works. Here's how it works. A bunch of people conquer a new land seeking religious freedom. It gets crowded. They start to move west. It's lawless territory. Yeah. They hang some bad guys. The sheriff's coast shows up. They move west. And then eventually they hit the, the Pacific Ocean. There's no yes. more territory. And so they invent cable. And that becomes the new Wild West. Because we all, man, humans, especially Americans, we always have to have a lawless land. We just have to. We have to have some aspect of our culture right. that's lawless. That was right. cable TV. So what happened was Jeff had this amazingly brilliant stupid idea to buy ads on cable tv because he knew people were watching it at midnight they had their credit cards on their nightstands they were anxious their marriages were falling apart they were drinking right. they were perfect suckers for like dying to university now or you know yeah you exactly do? so so he figured out how to get a hold of these mailing lists and then demographically sort through the mailing list and figure out where to buy ads. And then he found a media buyer uh, who was very savvy and was willing to parse her way through, you know, puzzle her way through this brand new world of, wow. of buying ads on cable. And then, then we made these ads, uh, you know, like the famous questions ads with the music. Sure. Did, 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 did. We made these ads and they, they put, they were cheap. They put them on everywhere. They sold like, so here's the deal. The book was published in 1950. By 1984, it had sold 3 million copies, right, which is okay. abysmal. And then right, by, I was going to say that long. Yeah. No, that's, that's abysmal for a book like that. I mean, if you look right. at the world of self-help books, that was abysmal. <clears throat> I mean, I think, well, this is much later, but I think the, the, the note, what is that one? The message, the note, the whatever. Oh, the secret. The secret. Yeah. That thing sold right. over 50, uh, over 50 million books. Yeah. Right. Right, just getting my soda real quick. <coughs> yeah, no problem. I got it. Um, Are you in an airplane? You look like you're in a in a private. Airplane. I know it looks like one, doesn't it? You look it like you're in a rich dude's jet. <laughs> I yeah. wish. Yeah. I wish. I'm in. A, I'm in an RV. It's a lot less. Glamorous. Oh, nice, nice. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm in uh, Monroe, Louisiana, so I'm traveling oh, nice. the whole continent. Um, oh, it's nice, a little, nice. A little RV that's right on the river, which is kind of nice. Oh, that's um, fantastic. So yeah, it's like very. A it's kind of like a, like a B&B kind of thing. It's like an RV. Yeah, it's an Airbnb. And... Yeah. So it's, you know, 60 a night, which is not. Yeah. Uh, no, that's and, great. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a fun way to do it. And Airbnb is the most fun because you're saying all these different types of places. And I'll do yeah. So, next. yeah. But. Okay. So essentially what happened was, uh, so they thought three million copies by the time we started to do these ads. And Jeff Hawkins really, I can't ever speak about this without mentioning that he is the guy that designed this whole thing. Okay. And uh, three or, three years later, we sold another 10 million bucks. Wow. So okay. this was a really effective ad campaign. I mean, I've referred to it as the most successful uh, advertising campaign in the history of publishing, which is not really saying that much because publishing oh, doesn't really sorry. take advantage. Right. I lost you for a second. Can you still hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you okay, ducked out right. and you came back. But so, yeah, yeah that was that. And That's that was my initial foray into working for the church. Okay. So, so you got involved early seventies. You were addicted to heroin. I was, I was, uh, I, 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 yeah, I managed to get myself. Into, I grew up in Laurel Canyon, which I've spoke about a lot about growing up in West Hollywood, growing up in Laurel Canyon during the whole explosive music scene. Right. Uh, and cause I was kind of a teenager, you know, I was just sort of behind a lot of those bands and age. So, well, you right. know, I, I, I had a really interesting 
youth in that respect. I left Hollywood. I left Laurel Canyon when I graduated from high school. I went up to the Bay Area seeking a, a more peaceful existence. I landed oh. there in, in the, what they, is now called the Summer of Love. <laughs> oh, sure. 69, of course. No, Are you going to it was not 69. No, it wasn't 69. Oh. It was, I think it was 67 seven? or 68. 67, yeah. right. Maybe that's right. <laughs> Seven, yeah. yeah. 69 was the Manson murders. That was right. And, and what's August. The, obviously right. That Summer was the of end the, of the, yeah, right. that was the end of the hippie era. So I, I arrived in San Francisco, I think in, in 1967, uh, right early in the, in the or, early in the summer. And uh, in Ashbury, I assume and all that. And yeah, yeah. But I think I didn't realize is there was a hundred thousand other kids showing up at the same time, sure. not that's to go to art school, but right. to just, you know, have sex and smoke weed and drop acid. And, right. And, tune in and uh, drop was, out. Tune in, turn on, drop out. All yeah, that yeah, yeah. It was yeah. pretty crazy. So yeah, yeah I, I got a sense of that. I was up there for a, a semester. And I came okay. back to LA and I and I got into film. And what was you know, I, I don't what 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 were your what were your parents' gigs or deal? what did they what do? do? Oh or, or what did uh, they? Yeah, you know, were they relatively or thinking, were they traditional? <laughs> my uh, parents were communists. Are you freaking hardcore, kidding? Hardcore, cool. Yeah, okay, no, so my parents were, were hardcore. My parents had friends who cool. were like, you know, members of the Hollywood blacklist. My, you know, my father was brought right. up before the FBI. My father was an architect. My mother was an art cool. professor. Cool. He, so he's like um, dealt with HUAC and stuff like that. And well, that actually, it was that. a local FBI flap. It wasn't a HUAC. Oh, cool. okay. So he didn't he cool. didn't get cool. full HUAC cred. But cool. my parents he's were. Mixed. Yeah, I mean, they were friends with Michael Wilson, who wrote cool. uh, Lawrence of Arabia, who was sure. blacklisted. And they were friends, not because my parents had any Hollywood connection, because uh, Michael Wilson's, uh, uh, his uh, his wife was an architect, and he and she and my father were kind of cohorts. Cool. Oh, fascinating. Okay, so they were really kind of cutting edge for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, going all the way back to the Spanish Civil War. I kid you wow. not. Wow, cool. Okay. My mother, this is crazy. My mother went to Hunter College. She grew up in Brooklyn. She went to Hunter, Hunter College with Bella Obzuk and that whole pro feminist wow. group. Of course, ran for mayor, yeah, like, congresswoman. Yeah, yeah, they were friends. Okay. And wow. She, that's what you see Bella was like back then. Was she just. I don't know. My mother's not around. I can't answer. Oh, sure. I, I can't <laughs> answer. Right. I, I could just tell you they were the opposite looking of one another because my mother was an absolute. Funny. My mother looked like a supermodel. But anyway. Well, after, um, a little less. Right. Yeah, she a little less, a little less than a supermodel. Right. But my, I know my mother when she yeah. was in college, she was she helped to organize the Lincoln Brigade that went over to Spain. So my parents were always right. very politically, very politically organized. Uh, 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 you know, um, uh, right. Yeah, so they were. Yeah, they were very political. They were, you know, left. It reminds very, me of my, very my, much so. Right. It reminds me of my. Okay, my, so. I just have to answer this question. Obi G. Foster says, "I saw that." Yeah. yeah, Mitch wants to know if I went. He, he wants to know if I went to the ninety six seven Monterey Pop Festival. I did not. I I, I did not. Yeah, I mean that was the the first rock festival. Original, and, sure. Yeah, and a lot of people say it was the last because Woodstock was such a disaster. I will tell you though, Obi G. Foster. Ultima later on, he would say Ultima might have been the very last, but uh, not, yeah, maybe. But I don't think yeah, Ultima was almost its own thing. It was so it weird. I almost yeah. went. Two things I almost went to was uh, Elvis's last uh, concert in Vegas and Altamont. I mean, I was cool. literally almost in a car going to Altamont, and I was so glad. Oh, I, didn't go. I mean, you might have gotten yeah. shit behind you in Altamont. But... You never know. I might have been the guy that was stabbed. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Better say that sorry. Yeah. Um, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And and another. Uh, how are they getting away with the teens and the organization being there? Is there any investigating? What are you talking about? Oh, oh, uh, uh, reading comment. I'm sure it still happens, but as so, how are they getting away with the teens and the organization being there? So we'll segue a little bit because this is an interesting question. Okay, is well, here's the deal: the teens who were in, I'm not okay. sure it still happens, but the kids as messengers and such. Well, right, it's like I saw kids working on the on the dais and the stage, and they're like probably 15 in Chicago. When, when so did you I, see I, that? I oh, really? Child, is alive and well. But they, were they in Sea Org? Were they in Sea Org uniforms? No, they no. They see yeah. as more casual. So maybe they, you know. Yeah, they might have picked them up as local volunteers. Uh, I mean, here's the deal. Let me just say this. I'm going to go on record as saying this. Everybody can attack me all you want. You all know my contact information. You're used to it. Yeah, there haven't been children in the Sea Org in 20 years. Okay, 
I'm oh, sorry to disappoint you, but there's no children in hotels. There's no children being abused. It's it's that whole thing yet. is a big is a big. Uh, it's just a misdirection to uh, sure. here's the problem because here's the deal. And I saw this happen. Um, the whole thing with, you know, first miscavige banned families from having babies. Right. Sure. And they heavily promoted abortions. And I saw all that when I got into Scientology, when I first got in, there was a celebrity center and I was trying to get off drugs. Uh, I worked in the nursery. I mean, I, I was like, like, what's his name? Vani Rabisi, the actor, his parents yeah, were right. in the, his parents were in the Sea Org at that time. I mean, I used to babysit right. him. What was he like as he a and, baby? Getting yeah, cool. no, he and his twin sister. He's a great guy, and so is his sister. Uh, oh, is he actually a decent dude? That's that's nice to hear. I bet some of them are actually probably. Well, everybody no, says he's uh, Vani is. I, I mean, I haven't seen him in years, but I have tremendous respect for him as, as an actor, and I knew him as a kid. Sure. I knew him when his career started to take off, cool. and uh, I, I thought he was a great guy. Uh, so, um, so anyway, Miscavige band babies banned families right and then uh, you know they as the kids grew up they there's no more kids i mean we're if you if you do the math on when the last babies were born in the sea org if you do the math on when miscavige said no more babies there's no more kids in the sea org that's funny there can't be and they won't take anybody in the sea org unless right. you are 18 and you have a ged because it's too oh, much trouble GED now. Yeah, it's too much trouble for them. Because if you don't have if you don't have a GED, they gotta they you know they kind of gotta get you one, or it's just bad public relations. So they well, really they the, want, I, I was I was surprised nobody's done a Trump University style suit on Scientology with you know I mean I was talking to Vanessa she had she had gone to you know uh, school before I was talking to some other people. And, you know, they, they would go to Scientology schools and find out that oftentimes they weren't accredited and stuff, or you couldn't. Yeah, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't, you mean like, uh, you mean like um, the place where my kids went for a while. Um, right, well, that's a weird, right, there's never seers, but there still are science, there are schools that. Yes, but the point is, the, but the, but we're, I'm, I'm not saying, Dodge, I'm not saying there's not kids in Scientology. No, I know. I'm saying, You're saying, I'm the saying there's no that's kids in the Sea Org. No, right. Yeah. They don't yes. want them. It's just a problem. It's just Is a there a cadet huge... org? Somebody Michael says No, no it? because there's no cadets. I mean, what would right. the cadets be? There's right. no children. Okay, so look, I I didn't do the math. I didn't know we were going to talk about this, but if you look at the <laughs> day Sorry, at the day um by the time I got to gold in 1990, there was no babies up there. There were little kids because I knew right. a lot of them, like Laura FM and like like cool. I knew her and I knew a bunch of cool. these kids. Uh but there were no babies. And so if, if right. even if let's say he banned it in 1990, all those kids would be growing up. I mean, Laura's like 40. Right. There's right. like no kids in the Sea Org. Like this thing about the children, the children, right. the children. The point is, is that they are human trafficking people from different points of the world. Right. That's the problem. The problem is, what about the children of public Scientologists who are, sure. they are being emotionally abused because raising a child in Scientology is, is a minimally a very severe form of emotional abuse. Sure. And, but nobody's talking about this. They're talking about, I keep hearing this stuff about kids being abused in the hotels. There's no children in any hotels anywhere. Well, but, but I think some people do have the viewpoint. I don't know what the statute of limitations are, but that if it was 25 years ago or 35 years ago, it'd still be valid enough to, personally charged Ms. absolutely Gavin. absolutely but it, it needs to be but it needs to be framed that way and it can't it can't yeah and it can't suck the oxygen out of it has to be framed like you people maybe there's no more kids in this year but what did you do when there were you get what i'm saying i mean it needs right. to be framed right, right, right. because there. you know what what do you want the fbi to go in and raid the fort harrison hotel they're not going to find anything and then everybody looks stupid like right. you have, you have to frame the thing properly, and then you have to say, well, what about the children that are being raised by Scientologists? I mean, you know, th there's some horrible outcomes. You know, like like, uh, you know, Liz Gale lost her her dear brother. You know, they were never right. in the Sea Org. There's right. these horrible stories, these horrible outcomes, and these are minimally emotional abuse. And I, the only reason I'm saying this so vehemently is I'd like to see the narrative. Uh, you want to be really accurate. Yeah, parallel what's actually happening, so that the, you know it can be ended. Uh, right. Is is it okay? So Bridge uh, da, 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 said, "Is it a problem that children are auditors?" Um, yes, it is absolutely a problem. We're talking about the children of public Scientologists. That's what we're talking about. Like when I was at Gold, 
there was uh, a 14 year old auditor who audited me under Marty Rathbun and, and she audited me in such oh, really? a way. Oh yeah. And she audited me in such a way, like she had an earpiece in her ear. Right. And Marty was in the next room listening to our session and he was screaming in her ear. You know, when somebody's like earpiece is, is bleeding, like they're listening to their iPod and so freaking loud. You can hear it kind of buzzing. I, I could make out his voice. He was asking her the most disgusting things. You know, ask him if he to a dog or a mm, to the, no. Like, to this, oh yes, yeah, the most things that were so obscene, <laughs> so, so obscene that like I'm sure pornographers would be saying, "Whoa, Marty!" So you're, whole, so whole. you're something curious because you you've witnessed that, which is fascinating. You've actually witnessed a child. It audit. happened to me. No, it actually literally happened to me. I wrote about it. I talked to the FBI. It about audited. It. So what? So when you ever see because the kid's 14. Would you ever see the kid either recoil in disgust or laugh uproariously? No, they just kept no, no, no. God, there was that kept, brainwashed. He was yeah, no, because they had their TRs in. They're trained to sit there and not react. They're being judged on how well they can not react. And this right. particular, this Take particular, yeah, protests, right? Yeah, this particular person. Um, it's so weird. It's just you almost lose your weird humanity ticks, even. I tried to break her down because I was. Funny. I felt. If so I were asked that question, if you banged a dog and I was 14 years old, it was worse I, than I that. I can't laughing. tell you what it was. Right. No, no, no. But you have Marty Rathbun, the top cop right. of Scientology, he's screaming everything. in your ear. Right. No, this is. And, and, and I'm sitting there, like, saying things to her, trying to get her to to like snap out of it. Right. And it doesn't work. They for effort. It right. doesn't work. So you, and, and you know, th this person, I don't know if she's in Scientology anymore. I know she's not in the CR. She came to me years later, like maybe she must've been in her twenties. She came into my office. I was still working at gold. She sat down and she looked at me and uh, the look in her face was, I'm sorry. Marty was gone. All <laughs> that, that, that phase That's was crazy. ended. And she was kind of like, felt really bad about it. She and this is when really, you were still in Scientology, you're saying, or this is after? Yeah, I was at Gold. I was like a you know, right. a senior director. I was in charge even of that, all that's it. That's even when she was in Scientology, she's just like, this is, this is kind of stupid. What's that, say that again? So even when she was still in Scientology, she, she, she still even gave you that look of being like. She gave me a look like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. And, she, and at that point, she worked in, um, it's called AVC, author of, uh, Authorization Verification and something. And it was part of like RTC. And so it, let's say I needed some cramming, what they call cramming. Like I say, I screwed something, I right. screwed something up and I needed to go. She's like, look, if you ever need any cramming, like come to me, I'll help you. So we, we actually became friends cool. uh, over the that whole thing. And, and well, yeah, because we kind of, we sort of had this agreement, this patent agreement. Well, it was really Marty's doing, you know, Marty was the bad guy, you know, which is to some degree that was very true because he was a bad guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But he uh, was for many years he was David Miscavige's closest friend. So Yeah, well that's that's a that's a fascinating <coughs> conversation about that whole situation yeah. too, which you have a lot of insight with. Uh first, Jensel makes a good point. You mentioned trafficking. They could potentially traffic uh traffic in underage Sea Org members and hold their papers. Uh they aren't on any books. Uh, being born in, yeah, they normal. could, but I mean, my own personal, yeah, but that's that, very but you true. Do that, though, with like immigrants, though, is that actually a yeah, thing? Yeah, but I think it's, I think Take your it's, passport. They're not kids, yeah. but I've heard that's still a thing. Yeah, I know. I I know that at Gold they stop keeping people's passports as soon as the Scientology learned that one of the uh, things that the FBI looks for for human trafficking is people have their documents taken away. Right. What I saw at Gold was they stopped doing right. that. They're like, they're like, oh, that's illegal. Oh shit, give everybody back your documents. But I guarantee right. you, they kept track of their documents. Like they probably that's told true. them, your documents need to be put in the nightstand next to your bed because we're going to go in there every day and we're going to inspect your room and we're going to make sure they're in there. So I'm sure they found a workaround. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. like they still didn't let them have control of their documents but they weren't holding them because they knew that that right. was illegal. It's and the same thing with asked. them getting rid. Yeah. It's the same thing with them getting rid of the RPF. Yeah. They got rid of the right. RPF because it was such bad PR, but they found other ways to sure. punish people severely, 
you know, and reindoctrinate them and so forth. So, and a lot of this is changing of the semantics on their part, I'm sure, and looking at the legal. Yeah, system. sure. Yeah, it just changed the word. This, does the room qualify to hold people? What, you know, if you take a document, what qualifies as keeping the document from them? If you mention one sentence and say you could have your document at the very beginning and then pretend it never exists, yeah. whatever it might be. Well, right. yeah, I mean, they're they're very clever because I'm sure, like, I don't know what they did with the documents. I do know that they stopped holding them because it's just too much. You know, I mean, Miscavige, he blew out of the international base in 2013 because, well, two reasons. One, he was worried about uh, an FBI raid. And number two, he was worried that he, he uh, I mean, the way he voiced it to me personally was, I'm never coming back here because there's too many people here that fucked me over. But I mean, come on. I think he was worried that one of those people was just going to kill him. You know, was going to find him without his entourage and just get, get, take revenge. So, I mean, you can only brutalize yeah. so many people before you can't stay there anymore. So, but no. I'm sure the way, I'm, I'm sure the way they did it was like, uh, you know, put, they instructed the staff where to keep their documents. And they instructed the staff that if you're ever interviewed by the FBI, you must tell them you have your documents and you know where they are. So I'm sure that they just did it that way. And then, if you know, because they used to do, uh, they used to search everybody's room every day. Uh, all yeah, yeah. Was, so security would go in there. You weren't allowed to lock the door. You know, there's all kinds of restrictions. Right. I mean, you don't have a room when you're in the Sea Org. You have a place that you can go sleep no. and people give you permission to sleep. I mean, right. it's... It's horrible, man. It's like... I was wondering about that, right? With with the Sea Org or, or kids in the base or anything, can you even bring in like a book or any or any outside? Media yeah, sure. Or... Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could have no food in your room. And gold was more permissive than other places. Uh, gold right. was much more permissive. Uh, yeah, and, and you were at Gold's a lot, I assume. Were you, were yeah, you... most most of the time I was at Gold. Yeah, right. from nineteen ninety until about twenty. 14 then i went to sap okay. for a few years then i went back to gold then i got the fuck out right that makes sense so i want all right so getting back so you got into scientology early 70s heroin addiction what was the first moment when you got interested in some what did somebody literally <laughs> hand you a leaflet did you see some cool no diet? what had happened was what had happened was my girlfriend at the time uh, we had both gotten involved. In, we were both addicted to heroin, right? Right. And I had, let me say, I, real quick, I had gone off to rehab. She got herself cleaned up. We got ourselves kind of cleaned up. And somehow when I was in rehab, I got cast in a, cast in a movie called Dusty and Sweet Spicky playing. They were yeah, looking how do you for get cast in a movie in rehab? How does it even work? Does somebody just walk well, into rehab and say, you? No, 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 no. There was a guy named Floyd Mutrix who was a kind of an interesting filmmaker. Classic you can look him up. Too. And, cool. and no, this film is it's still streaming on Amazon. I mean, it's in the museum. Oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, you should watch it. It's it's yeah. I my girlfriend and I played the title characters. I I didn't talk about this much for like you know the film was made in I think we shot it in seventy one. It, it okay. was released cool. in July seventy two. It was a top grossing film in L A for two weeks. Yeah, no shit. Um, wow. Yeah, so it was kind of supposed to be this this kind of drug fueled. Oh, Jefferson Hawkins is in here, by the way, by the way. Oh, hey. yeah. So, Jeff, hey, it's I, an honor to have you. Jeff, your your ears were buzzing, right? Because I was saying really nice things about yes. yeah. what a genius you were for selling all those books. I just want you to know, Jeff, I've apologized for both of us for selling all those Dianetics books. So. Hey, it takes talent. Um, yeah. So nice, nice of him to be in there. But sorry, what, what you're saying is... Uh, yeah, so anyway, I... Uh, yeah, so this director who'd made a few films... And right. I was gonna, uh, he wanted to make a, uh, I would describe it as a drug fueled cinema verite version of American graffiti. <laughs> young, no, I'm serious. How fun. You know, with, with all of the music, except, you know, the music would be like very moody as opposed to. So it wouldn't know, be, it wouldn't be fifties. I assume anymore. No, no, no. It would be, it would be uh, in the time that it was Are made. Are they going to make nice... like Dion drop acid or something? Or is it like doo-wop with like acid in it? Or is it? No, no, it... no. It was like, I'm, I can't think of it. No, no, it was really cool. Uh, like into the Mystic, what was his name? We did into the Mystic, my little runaway. Uh, sure, Del Shannon. Really sure. cool, yeah, Del Shannon, my little runaway, yeah. and then oh, what's cool. his name? Like, yeah, it was really the soundtrack was fantastic. This guy was very much, 
he did another film called American Hot Wax, which was the guy oh, was Matt obsessed. Damon. Isn't uh, Richard Dreyfuss is in that? If I'm not mistaken, I, I think so. yeah. I don't know who's in American Hot. Wax. Yeah, American Hot Wax is. Uh, oh, so he did. Like, that's a famous movie. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this director, he wanted to do this kind of cinema verite thing. So like, he started talking to heroin addicts in L.A. Like he found this one girl named Nancy who lived in Venice, and she was a, a dope fiend. Like, like a person, like I was never a dope fiend. There's a certain kind of heroin addict was a dope fiend. I was never a dope fiend. I was always struggling to get off a of junk. I had whatever, you know, Audio, for me. Had some sort of. Yeah, I was trying to get to college. I mean, for me, it was right. like some weird trauma response, uh, you know, getting involved with heroin. But anyway, so he was, uh, um, I'm, okay. So anyway, uh, so. So uh, he wanted to make this film called Dusty and Sweets McGee. And uh, so he was looking, uh, he needed like a Romeo, not a Romeo and Juliet. He needed a, a really good looking, like screen ready couple, okay. right? Yeah. Like, uh, and I've, I've showed people pictures of me in the movie and they're like, you've got to be that's fucking right. kidding. That's cool. you. So, um, so he was, they were, the, the, they were, they were, they were producing this thing out of CBS studio center, right? not far from where I currently live. And uh, so somebody from that lot from, from the production company co was calling rehabs and they called the sketchy rehab that I was in. I was, and I was clean wow. at that point. And so they, they, uh, they were aware of you for some reason. And no, they were just calling around saying, you got any good looking people there? I'm, I, I'm Funny. not bragging, but Funny. I had, I had modeled wow. and I did some it's acting. And, yeah. It's a, it's I mean, a, if you, if you Google it, if you Google get it, you'll affordable rates. What's that? It's a good way to get an affordable rate for an actor. Just call yeah, rehab. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. No shit. Yeah, because yeah, we I, certainly yeah, didn't get paid I, very I, much. Yeah. So anyway, um, the rehab guy said, "Yeah, I got a guy here, and his girlfriend is beautiful." And she was. She was literally one of the most beautiful women who ever lived. I'm not even joking. Okay. And you could Google it and look. You can. Uh, yeah, you can yeah, see pictures of her. So anyway, um, so he loaded us in the car. So he, he, I called her up and I said, hey, come on out here. We're going to go audition for a film. I was a film student. I'm like, this is cool, right? Like I could relate. I mean, as, as, a, as a kid who was trying to get off a of junk, there was a horrible experience. But, you right. know, as a film student, it was great, right? I mean, I got to work with, you know, William Fraker shot the thing. I mean, he's probably the greatest cinematographer that never won an Oscar. You know, well, like okay. William, William Randall did the sound. He won an Oscar for In Cold Blood. This was a legitimate well, sure. independent film. Sure. So anyway, we well, ended up doing well. this film. And by the time that's, the, a, that's a happy break, you go to rehab and then automatically get a film. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I get cast in the film. No, yeah. and, 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 and uh, so then let me see what happened was a long time ago. Okay, so by the time the film came out, she and I were back together living in an apartment in West Hollywood and we had become like the characters in the film. It was really tragic. And uh, I woke up a week before Christmas and um, she was dead on, of an overdose on, on the oh, kitchen God, floor. That. That, yeah. yeah, it was, it was a long time ago. And uh, I've, I've done a number of things that really honor her life because she was right. a, an, an amazing person. Uh, anyway, so the director Floyd Mitrix had started dating some girl who was doing Scientology a celebrity center. She brought him in and he was doing Scientology and he was kind of like one of the first celebrities, a celebrity center. Right. So then he brought me in that's and that's right. really right? noted. Oh, so he was already connected. Interesting. Yeah. He had just started doing oh, Scientology. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't remember his girlfriend, whatever, but <coughs> you know, the, the, they weren't together. Very long. And so when I was, when I went there, it, I, I got a little rough start. If you want to hear, read all about it, I'm not going to go into detail. It's all in my sure. book. I've, I've detailed the, the whole bloody journey into Scientology. Um, it's a I'm fascinating sure. story. But when I got in there uh, it, it is when a woman by the name of Yvonne Gentsch, who founded Celebrity Center, uh, uh, she was married to Heber Gentsch. And there was a bunch of very notable people. It was, it, it was, if you know anything about Synodon, the drug rehab place. Sure, of course. The, the early days of Synodon. It's funny because I almost went to, I think I told you this, I almost went to Synodon, but it was right, too right. much of a cult, so I didn't go. So Yes. They're all, they're all <laughs> the same era, all that stuff, you know. Yeah, so, I but, see. yeah, but it's kind of like, 
you know, there's no going back to what Synodon was when it started. I mean, you had people like Leonard Nimoy right. going down there and giving acting lessons. It was very That's much right. an accepted thing. People loved it. And then it right. became a dangerous armed cult because that's yeah. just the trajectory yeah. of these organizations. They all do it, right? So I got right. into oh, Scientology. You know, when I got, group, you know, well, when I got into it, it, it was counterculture. It wasn't. Right. Oh, that's how they all started out, right? Yeah. they all, It was very much a counterculture movement. It was an alternative movement. Like drugs didn't work and free love didn't work and nothing worked. Right. So maybe we need to take a more spiritual view well, it always, it a lot of these things were always like, it's the ideas of the free love without the fun of the free love. You know, <laughs> yeah. that was, it was kind of, seems like. Well, no, it's, I, I, it's kind of weird because I, I think when I got into Scientology, I think everybody was, you know, having sex with everybody else. And, sure. and, and then, you know, Scientology is one of the most sex negative organizations in the world. I mean, as right. A, that's as, why it's strange to hear that. Yeah. It's just right. so bizarre. I mean, yeah. it's, it's. Right. It's it's run by a guy who might potentially actually be asexual. We're not sure. I always thought he might be. You know? Yeah, he very he very well may may be a, a very sexually deficient. I'm not sure, but I'm right. I'm whatever. I'm not gonna. Not well, gonna no, it's interesting that. to talk to him just for a second. That is interesting. Have, uh, besides for Shelley and that rumor of Lou, has he ever? No, 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 not a rumor, not a rumor. Really true. Can you just well, say Shelley? Some sexuality. If he's not necessarily. He's, he has very close female. I mean, somebody did. Right. I think it was Mark Fisher that told me he walked in on him and Shelley. He was banging Shelley and in, in the in, in the whatever. Like he walked yeah, in and, and it was. Yes. Yeah, but I don't know the thing with Lou. I mean, I flew on a jet. Everybody knows the story. I flew on Tom Cruise's jet. I think in 2016, 2017. Right. I flew to the IS event in England. Tom wasn't on the plane, but right. you know, Tom tosses the keys to his jet to his bro. And and sure. and then and then Dave probably, you know, dips into the IES funds and pays for the gas because that's expensive. The gas to from, from from LAX to London. I mean, I think that's a lot of gas. You know, that's that's sure. and uh, you know, and then he'll bring his best friends along. And I happen to be one of those people at that time for a brief period of time. <laughs> I was oh, working wow. with him a lot, but you know, right. there's a, I think it was a G5. I'm not sure, but I, I googled the bedroom. And two people are not going to spend the night in that bedroom without being intimate. I mean, at least they're, they're like, yeah, you know, Michael Michael Jackson and his friends, and they're sleeping in the same bed. I mean, at least it's like that kind of thing. Sure, uh, well, it, we'll have issue with that, you know. So yeah, but but it's like, you know, we all like got in the jet and we had five star tacos and and you know then we took off and then an hour after takeoff, Dave and Lou said disappeared and I didn't see him until the next morning. Uh, so, you know, and, and they were both freshly showered. And so it was just like, they still, I mean, they look like they showered together, you know, when people are kind of flush cause they just show. So I, I, I never thought it was a rumor. I mean, it's just like, that's why I've yeah. always made it. I've, I mean, I've been shouting from the rooftops, this thing of like, you know, where's Shelly? What about who's Lou? Because she is the woman behind Shelly's disappearance. Right. So if right. you really give a crap about Shelly, you're going to be talking about Lou. What's she up to? Yeah, she's right. been she was jockeying to get rid of Shelly since the early '90s. Right. Uh, I want to go to a few other comments because uh, the sure. thing about my my chat is not moderated, so you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> uh, one person in this chat is is anybody in this chat in support of these grease balls? So Lori doesn't appear to like any of us, but hey, thank you for watching. Nonetheless, Does any know why narcissistic men are so drawn to cults, Lori B. Yeah. Oh no, um, that's actually not true, Lori. You have a, you have a, 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 a very flawed understanding. Um, uh, who's drawn to cults are people that are vulnerable and empathetic, and and idealistic, and through a very devious series of events, the they will often they will often gain narcissistic traits, but narcissistic. Very few narcissists are drawn to cults. I do know some. Right. Most people are drawn because of, I'll say it again, because of vulnerability and idealism, and they're very right. empathic. So I'm not just quite sure. Right. You know, you're narcissistic. You like the 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 economic pleasures, the luxuries, and it kind of keeps you happy in some ways. Oh, is she like saying that I'm narcissistic because I was on Tom Cruise's jet? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you can help I, us I think maybe, qualify yeah, well, that right. 
Lori is another thing to know, which is interesting. I want to go back and help this creep understand that he was a perpetrator of child SA, which I don't think that was the case, but it's interesting. Who, me? To explain. me? Yes, I guess by being audited by a 14 year old child. I don't know how that would be sexual assault. You could say that Marty yeah, Rath no, uh, committed sexual yeah, no. by saying these things. Into yeah, this no, I, I was, I was yeah, actually. No, I was actually a traumatized victim. What this person is doing? Well, both of you were right. Both you yeah, and the kid were. They're trauma. They're trauma shaming oh. because I was. I was. I was trauma bonded to the organization, and right. I was put sure. in that position with her. And right. I spoke to the FBI about it. I mean, they weren't saying, you know, you're a perpetrator. You know, sure. I mean, I, I. So this person, there's a lot of this stuff that goes on. It's kind of the normalization I know, it's of emotion. Interesting, just to just to. Yeah, I know, mean, I, it, yeah. So. She keeps saying, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll move on. But yeah, Lori please. Says, no, but Lori I really, I really, I really want people to understand that I was not the perpetrator of that situation. No. No. And, and I assume, and just, yeah. I assume if you saw her, you probably would apologize because you wouldn't want her, you know, you wouldn't, now you wouldn't want her to audit you. But yeah, I mean, both well, of you. Well, no, guys I are, took myself out of that situation. Like, look. You did, right. That's a good point. Yeah, I took myself out of that situation and I went to the authorities. I told them about right. it. I wrote a book about it. I went on YouTube well, about true, it. Right? You're, she's mad at you, but you're the one that's exposing this. So yeah, but but what's here's what's so funny. The only reason uh, he knows to be it. mad at me, the only reason he knows to be mad at me is because I exposed it. <laughs> okay, right. Think about think about how how hypocritical that is. So. Um, yeah, I, this has happened to me in other in other ways. I've been accused of being a right, and, and just, like, just to, yeah, and just to just to say the last thing, you said she apologized to you. Yes, Mitch said she apologized. Mitch did not say she deserved to apologize to him. She just he was just saying she was a little aware of how ridiculous the audit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we we like apologize to each other. Right, right. Uh, right Lori P right. saying you were not the victim. No, I wasn't the victim. Right. I was right. I was being victimized. She was yes, the victim. Yes, I agree with that. And yes. Marty was the perpetrator, and you and you weren't there. So right. and, and, and 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 I have, I have, you know, in the words of Desmond Tutu, you know, everybody needs forgiveness. Like, how do you come back? The way you come back, number one, you stop doing whatever you were doing that was causing harm. Sure. And then you do whatever you can to make sure the harm never happens again. Whistleblow, right. And if you would right. object to that. my doing either of those things, why are you even in this chat? Like, right. what is the point? Right. She did say she apologized. So cool. Uh, I yeah, I mean, I was in a position no. Lori, where it's fine. I, uh, yeah, yeah, no. whatever. We don't have to deal with that anymore. I mean, no, she's not no. going to stop. <laughs> I, I never said I, that. I never. I never said that I was the victim. No, either. no, I, I don't think you did. And it, that's my yeah. my thing is purely democratic. So I think a little controversy is, is interesting. I actually I, felt that I was being made to participate. That I was being forced to participate yes, in the victimization of a fourteen year old girl. Yes, because right, verbal verbal sexual assault is sexual assault, and I felt that I was being made to participate in it which is right. one of the reasons I left and one of the reasons that I blew the whistle. Right. Oh, Laurie's apologizing to me. Laurie, you don't need to apologize to me. Everybody can make the, their selves heard. Uh, yeah. So, like it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's, but it's like, it, interesting. It, it's good to know how people react. It is. And that's why this is, that's why our, the lives that I will have is a little more interesting because again, it's an open, <laughs> it's completely yeah. open gate. Um, and, and I like it that way. Uh, but, uh, but I'm glad you explained that because you do have to explain to people how you were brainwashed in that same regard. And now, yeah. you, right. Your yeah. mission is to expose the injustice that this 14 year olds received, you know, so you exactly. agree, I mean, you, you'd agree as sexual. I mean, I'm sure you would agree that Marty Rathbun verbally by saying the banging dogs and all this crazy stuff verbally did yeah. sexual assault this 14 year old. Yeah. And, and, and verbal sexual assault is recognized. Yeah, right. it's recognized as a crime against a minor. It's it's it is one hundred percent. It's right. a felony. So yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so anyway, so all right. So we we have a million fun topics. Uh, so I appreciate you bearing with me. Okay. Early good. Early seventies. You. So here's a fun thing. I want to talk about some of the communications people, uh, because I've I've I have done journalism and and have listened with deep fascination to Heber to uh, 
David Miscavige, obviously, well, he wasn't a communications guy, but to Heber, to Tommy Davis, to Mike Renger, even to this African-American woman who I want to talk about what her deal is, who kind of does some YouTube stuff for Scientology these days. But so Heber just, so you, so his wife, he had a first wife before Karen Del Carrier. I never knew that. What was what was the first wife like? I heard she was kind of a mother well, I, hen. I don't know. Regard. I don't know. I don't know that she was the first wife. I mean, she was the first wife that I knew of. Um, oh, I get it. Uh, Lori, how do you feel about Aaron Smith living? Oh, I get it. So now they're all blowing up. Okay, we're going to just forget about all that. You can skip um, that one. You're fine. So Lori, I'm just going to say it one more time. I yeah. was forced to help abuse verbally a 14 year old girl okay i have apologized to the to her she's apologized to me i've ratted marty out for Not fucking fair. doing it i don't yeah. know what else you I mean, I think that's the, want i think marty I don't know what you her. want but whatever it is you want go ahead and say it in the chat and i'll i'll <laughs> well, no, uh, no need so, no need to hang on it uh, okay so no so so yvonne gench uh who originally her name was gillam she had a previous husband her daughter, uh, Janice Grady, who has a channel called Peeling the Onion with Mark Fisher. Uh, okay. I knew her. She, she was one of the original messengers. They were part of, you know, in, in the 50s, I think it was the 50s, maybe the 60s. Uh, yeah, maybe late 50s, early 60s. Scientology was outlawed in Victoria in Australia, right? I didn't know that in the whole state of Victoria, huh? Yeah, the whole state of Victoria. It was outlawed. They so were you had this of their time being in 59, yeah, yeah. 60, 61. Yeah. God, I wonder how they saw that the red flags way back then. I don't know, but you know, unfortunately, it's not that way anymore. So no. you have this kind of a diaspora of about 200 families that fled Victoria and they all went to St. Hill, England, right? That's I didn't know that was fascinating. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And so Yvonne was one of those people, she was one of the first people to join the Sea Org. And while she was oh. on the uh, while she was on the sh one of the ships with Hubbard, uh, he was talking a lot about uh, how you had to appeal to celebrities, you had to re recruit celebrities, that it was right. very important to the future of Scientology. Right. Yeah. So um, she, I think, because he was kind of chasing after her, like he had. He had like like sexual right. intentions towards her. Yeah, okay. She 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 literally fled the ship, and she went to L.A. and she started Celebrity Center. She founded Celebrity wow. Center, That's a big and she around. actually was this incredibly caring person who was one of the most beloved people ever in Scientology. And she sort she started Celebrity Center just as like an office to help artists to come help platform their careers. And then it kind of became a church and it became that's, you know, by 1973, when, when I ended up there, it was really a happening place. Hey, ransom question, just because you're talking about happening in the early seventies and some of the cool music, L Ron Hubbard's daughter, D Diana, did she, what is oh, her yeah. album actually decent as a, as a, a fan of that music. Was she actually like a decent musician? I can't remember. I mean, she, she was a competent. Yeah. She was a competent piano player. I remember when she did oh, it, yeah. I saw her in concert. She actually opened yeah, it. The Palladium. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. I, she opened it. The palladium. Uh, wow. You know, she, did that? So she was pretty. Well, no, 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 she, no, 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 no. But listen, no, hold on, hold on. Don't you're, you're jumping too far ahead. She opened for chick Korea at the palladium that's, and the oh, whole thing. Right, the whole thing was probably just paid for yes. by Scientology, See, and it was Chick probably. A... I'm like, that's impressive. Then I remember, oh, Chick Corea is a very committed Scientologist. Right, that's funny. Uh, so interesting. So she she had this 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 way of kind of helping people reviving them. She was amazing. Um, I mean, she like right. like I I actually consider that Avon Chen saved saved my life, uh, like literally right. because. The, Wow. Like I didn't go to Norcanon. I literally lived with the staff at Celebrity Center for six weeks and got wow. off drugs. And they basically told me the person that was, you know, my person there said, if 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 you uh, you know if you apply yourself to this, you can get off drugs. And then at the end of that, you can decide if you want to stay in Scientology. Today, if somebody said that, they would be sent immediately to the RPF or wherever they send people today. Funny. Yeah. So so. Yeah, so I you know, I didn't want to leave. I mean, I was like, right. when I went in there, I was traumatized. I didn't sleep for weeks. I was I weighed 127 pounds. I was like six foot tall, 
I was emaciated. I was just like my girlfriend had died. I was like, ah, it was really horrible. And six yeah. weeks later, I was sleeping like a baby. I'd gained 30 pounds. Wow. wow. And so you know, I left. I went back to film school. I graduated from California Institute of the Arts. Uh, sure. So you had your own seven. life. I assume. And this is interesting, too. Once you graduated and you were having the, the academic credentials, were you still receiving auditing by Scientology? Uh, Scientology? Not so much because I, I put a lot of time into concentrating on my career. And I was right. very, very, very busy. Uh <laughs> So I actually, there was probably a period of about 10 years there where I was sort of like a kind of a regular, like kind of maybe a mid-level uh, in terms of interaction, public Scientologist. Okay. I was in and out. I would do stuff. I was traveling, right. you know, for work. And it's like, you know, I, I you know, so, yeah. But so I did continue it. And I, de I identified as a Scientologist for all during right. that time. Right. And so you're in there. How did people get aware of your film? When did you start working the film stuff? Was that, are you talking eighties or have you been in there for what, half a decade? And then that was the. Well, I, you know, I was a student at Celebrity Center and then I, 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 you know, right. did some stuff at eight. Yeah. But I was basically home base. I was student at Celebrity Center because that's where I got in. And okay. um, so people knew me there. They knew what right. I did. They knew I was a commercial director. There weren't a lot of directors in Scientology. Uh, you know, I was like working pretty regularly directing television. So it's kind of. And and so you're doing outside television commercials, I assume. You were oh, yeah, trash. totally. I mean, big clients. Yeah, yeah, international clients. I I, I did work in Japan. I did work in Europe. I cool. did, you wow. know, nothing to do with Scientology. Nothing to do with Scientology. So, so here's a question. One of the hilarious things that people tend to have consternation with you, which I think is bullshit, is that they don't <laughs> like that you actually made money. Uh, yeah. No, I made so much less money working for them than I would have made. Uh, right. Put, so, right. I mean, I'm sure this is gonna, people are going to even hate me more for this. Um, I made them hundreds of millions of dollars and they want to bitch and moan about what they paid me. It's insane. Right. They are still making right. so much money off of my work that I wish I could figure out a way to, to shut that shit down. But I can't. So that's a bunch of bullshit. The only reason that the Internet knows that they paid me a decent amount of money, what some people would say, like, is a decent amount of money is because I shared it with Aaron. Right, right. You shared right, right. what you got paid. So, right. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he made a big deal about it. And this is nothing against Aaron. Nope. Aaron is a friend of right. mine. I got no problem with Aaron. He's a great guy. What he's done is amazing. Well, people miss it over. But he did. He did go. Well, you know, you were. You wanted to be right. there, and you were being paid. Well, you wow. know, you wanted to be paid too. I mean, okay, you were making forty bucks a week, and I was making sure. whatever. But right. you know, and this is nothing against Aaron. But when he joined the Sea Org. He, you know, he owned a car, he owned a house, he had money in the bank. Like he hadn't, he didn't have to join this. He wanted to do it. But here's right. the point. Here is the point. And this is why I have no problem with Aaron. Aaron was, you could theoretically was born in the Scientology. Yeah, he was like four years old. Or so. right. Same thing. He was born in Scientology. How is that different from being brainwashed in a Scientology? Some people were born in, some people were brainwashed in. No, How is that different? Sometimes unless, unless you're going to go, unless you want to start trauma comparing. Right. No and different. I don't think I he just, is. I think it's some people who follow him. No, not Aaron. Him. Not Aaron. Aaron right. doesn't. And, he's not. Right. A, and there's some people who want to split hairs and say your trauma is not as intense as their trauma. Therefore, that's right. You. That's, we don't want yeah, you to it's, be it's, right. in the yeah. space, be in the movement. You made some money. Go fuck yourself. Even though you have this incredible, because you were close to the top. All these other people, a lot, except, of course, there's some, you know, um, uh, Mark Headley is an, an exception. There, there are a fair number of them, but in many of these you people in this YouTube space, they didn't get to know the people on the top, and that's why it's so fascinating. Well, to have yeah, that conversation. With yeah, them. and you know, and that's, that's okay. What Everybody you need to be out here and, sh and telling your story. Well, yeah, but need. but the thing is, is that my my original purpose, like I went onto YouTube originally for all the wrong reasons. I wrote a book. I thought the, I thought the book was important. It was important to it me. Is. I thought it was a story that needed to be told. And so I was invited onto YouTube as a way of promoting my book. And well, then yeah. people went, people went, you just want to sell a book. Like all of a sudden that became a bad thing. Right. Right. And so, right. right. Then, you know, I sort of pulled back and, and I, I am coming back. I'm working on an audio book. So I've been, well, really I, hope busy. You know, I hope you do. And, you know, people will try to split hairs and create divisions, even when there aren't any, because I don't think, he has a personal division or you a personal division with him. And some people just try to 
Uh, no, look, not at all. Not, not there. At all. So, you know, yeah, continue, man. I mean, that's, it's super important what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, but the thing is, is, you know, for me, my purpose in being on YouTube is to try to create a space so that people understand cultic, the, 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 what happens, like how you get drawn into a cult, right. um, you know, how, not just cultic abuse, but also relational abuse. And um, I've had a very intense mental health journey coming out of Scientology. And imagine. before I got into Scientology, I was like studying Eastern religion when I was 15 years old before I did heroin. And I was this kind of person. So when you leave, you sort of end up being that person again. And so it's more important to me to be uh, rather than, you know, that sort of reporting on things. It's important to me to be shedding light on how these things happen and how you can heal and what you need to do. I mean, there's a lot of people left Scientology that have not processed one minute of having been in Scientology and they don't think they need to. So it's, and they, and they, and, and I'm not saying that they do. I'm just saying I did. And I would very much like to share that with people because I think it would be helpful. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you, OBG Foster, who's been a big supporter in the chat. Not most people are big supporters in the chat, um, but I just took out the ones that weren't. But OBG Foster has a great question. Uh, did the tech, I just, tech, did the technical stuff you learned in film school ever make you question the e meter? God, what, that's a question. I, I because I knew how to focus a motion, I knew how to shoot a motion picture camera. Uh, you knew how to use a light meter. Um, so right, here, I, guess- I mean, that's an interesting question i mean look here's the deal here's the deal i I should probably do some content on this the answer to your question is no it did not what i learned technically in film and i we you know you learn a lot of technical stuff when you study film uh maybe even more so now because everything is digital but i mean here's the deal the e-meter it does something i'm trying to figure it out i think what it does it creates a feedback loop between you and the person that's guiding you through the session, which they call an auditor, right? It creates feedback this kind of would be the vibra- or the, the like the a biofeedback right. loop. And right. you're you're indoctrinated into what the session is supposed to do, right? And you know it's supposed to make you feel good. So it's this very clever biofeedback loop that starts to generate dopamine after a while these reward hormones, it starts to generate those in your brain. Okay. And this is, it it gets people addicted. And so uh, I haven't figured it out yet, but it's, it's not like the e-meter does nothing. It does actually do something. And and the the thing is, is that there's this thing in Scientology, it's called see a thought. They do this on the street. It's a little, you could go into any, any organization that will do it for you. you. You hold the cans, right? Squeeze my cans, right? You hold the cans and then they pinch you just enough so it hurts a little and the needle does a movement. And then they say, you wait a minute for the needle to die down and they say, recall that pinch. And you think of the pinch and the needle does the same thing. And this is infallible and it's just some kind of parlor trick, but it works. It's like Sylvia Brown or, you know. Yeah, but this is the dangerous thing about the meter is that it's up to the auditor and the auditor's training to decide what that needle movement means. That's right. That's what's so dangerous about it. So if there's a movement on the needle and and the auditor says, so, you know, what did you do that you don't want to tell me? And the person says nothing. And that it really is nothing, but the needle goes like this. Then the auditor says, well, what was that? So your truth doesn't matter. The meter matters. So that's the thing that people need to understand not whether or not we were stupid and didn't get that it doesn't do anything because it does do something. It's a very, it's once you believe that it works, you fall into this kind of feed, feedback loop and it does create these positive, these positive kind of reward chemicals in your brain. Yeah. So, OBG yeah. again, Doug Kramer, rest in peace, said it was a method of hypnosis. Good way to put it. Yeah, it is. It is right. because if you think about, if you think about hypnosis, hypnosis is, is, is uh, anchored to two things which are uh, repetition and fixation. You got to get a person to fixate and then you have to repeat something. And that's how you hypnotize people. And Hubbard knew that. So every process in Scientology has this aspect of fixation where you're fixated, right? right? And, and, and repetition where the same thing is being done over and over. Fascinating. Uh, what was the thing? I, so, all right. So we were talking about, uh, he has the a really interesting question, which got me totally sidetracked. We were talking about your early days Working with Yvonne, what was Heber Gench like? 
back in the day. Well, he, you know, Heber, Heber was a, a really gracious guy. He was a that's, big guy. That's what's interesting. He was the last of the gracious spokespersons. Yeah. The warm, yeah. Yeah. So he was really like that in person. 100%. The last time I saw Eber was probably Heber was probably, you know, Heber was, was, you could guess from his name, he was from a polygamous family. He was, yeah, right. Like, he's an LDS. But he's, yeah, he right. no, 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 no. He wasn't right. LDS. He was Offshoot, the other FLDS yeah. or, right. No, no, no. They're called the, whatever they're Baron yeah. clan. LeBaron, maybe? I, I, no, I don't know what, what he was from, but he had like 25 brothers and sisters. And he was also an accomplished singer. Uh, I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So the film, the film, Paint Your Wagon, right? Don't know it. You okay. Paint Your Wagon is a very famous musical, and they made okay. it into a film starring Lee Marvin and Clint sure. Eastwood. Sure. And, it, and the only reason I went oh. to see it is because it was shot by William Fraker, who shot Dusty and Sweet Spaghetti. But sure. uh, Heber was one of the, the in the chorus. Wow. He, okay. he, he was he sang in that film. And uh, he was a very accomplished singer, and he was a great no spokes. Yeah, he was a great spokesperson. He's a very gracious guy. The last time I saw, remember, I knew him like from the beginning of my Scientology career. So the last time I saw Heber was at Gold. I think it was in about 2019, maybe 2020. It might even been 2021 because that was no no reason. The, the last time the last time I was at Gold was like January, February 2021. Wow, uh, no, so when was lockdown? Down. No, wait a minute. When was lockdown? 2020. Uh, 2020. Okay, yeah. so 2020, not 2021. Oh, not that long. But I so saw Heber. You saw, you saw him that that as recently as 2020. Yeah, or 2019 Wild. maybe. 2019. Yeah, and he was. They were walking him in into a room. They had these barometric. Are they called barometric? Well, he couldn't even walk at this point. So that's well, the, he was on a walker. True. He had right. a walker, and somebody was helping him. And they okay. have these, what do they call these oxygenated uh, chambers? Is it a bariatric chamber? I okay. keep getting that. And they they bought a bunch of them because Miscavige likes to sleep in them. You know, Michael Jackson used them. <laughs> yes, I did hear about that. Yes. Yeah. So they have they have a couple of them up at Gold, and they were they were helping Heber into one. But he saw me and he said hello, and he said it with the same sparkle in his eyes as when I was twenty three years old and I met him at Celebrity. They still had it. He, yeah, he was always just this most gracious guy. There were a couple of guys up there like that, and then there were a bunch of really evil, so, evil people. I'd imagine. So, what is what was the daily life? If you had any idea of Hebert in 2020, what did they do with him? Everybody talks uh, about Shelley, but like poor Hebert, man. Were they really? Well, no, he, he no, he was just being managed by what's called the MLO's office, which is the medical liaison. They're the kind of fake medical department. Iron Law, um, yes, Peter, thank you. Barometric, yeah. thank you very much, Peter Anderson. Yeah, so they were just managing him, probably giving him Scientology assist, making sure that he ate. And then I think when they became concerned that he was going to die, they moved him into an old age home because they don't want... He's in a hot... It, right, he's in some yeah. sort of care now. So, yeah, but because... Interesting, but they didn't really torture him or do anything. No, no, him. well, no, he was in the hole. I know, for, right? Yeah, Certainly. for years he was being After tortured was in there. Person. Right, yeah. right. But he got out yeah. of the hole, and I wonder. So he's not even zombie-like. He was still like a present person when he saw. Oh, him totally. Yeah, totally. Well, last time I saw. And so he still believes in all of it and everything. I yeah, assume. I mean, the thing about that kind of indoctrination is that right. even me, I had seen so much bad shit, and I stayed because I didn't want to be unemployed. And don't even start with me in terms of the shame and the guilt that I've had to process for staying so long just because I kept figuring out a way that I could make a transition and not be unemployed. That's just, you know, that's a kind of, that's like a form of, of self-abuse. Ah. So I don't need to hear about it from anybody. Right. So if anybody wants to chime in on that, please don't bother. Uh, <laughs> so uh, because uh, believe me, I've self-immolated enough on, oh, on that point. But right. um that's but anyway, but it, yeah, but anyway, I, I forgot. I, I just I went into a no, no, so. it's just, I was just I was asking about him because he was, you know, one of those early figures, and I always wondered, like, did he believe at the end? Or he well, here, oh, here's what I was gonna say in, in spite of everything I'd seen and everything I'd been through, when I left, the indoctrination is so bad that you you feel like you failed this group even though you know that they're horrible and they're abusive. This trauma bond is so horrible that, it, and it's a little bit like 
you know, you talk to soldiers and, and they're like, well, why were you fighting? And they're like, I was fighting for the guy in the trench next to me. And so there's a little bit of that because, you know, there's all these people that you worked with. I mean, I worked with this, this, the, uh, you know, the film crew up there who, right. when I, when I first went up there, they'd all been banned into the kitchen by Miscavige. They weren't allowed near their tools because they couldn't make a film and their lives were horrible. And then I came up and they were all allowed out, but we made a film and all of a sudden their lives were better. So I was like, uh, you know, I was like a, a good guy because I made their lives better, um, much more survivable. And so then I was like, oh, I let them all down. I can't leave. You know, they'll, they'll be locked back sure. in the kitchen again. So it's a really complex thing. And, and, and I wasn't in the Sea Org. I wasn't, per se, restricted to the base. So, right. you know, for somebody like Heber, for a Sea Org member, it's just got to be a thousand times worse. That sense of like, I'm in the hole and you're being tortured. But you're like, you're thinking I deserve it. You know what I'm saying? You're you're Right. And that's fascinating. Probably still. Yeah. Why, why do you think they transitioned him away from being that main spokesperson? Because he I've seen some of the early interviews in the 80s, high 70s, and he actually smiles and comes off as warm. Yeah. And like the grandfather you wish you had in some sense, he was not antagonistic. Yeah. And then you go from right. him to. Mike Rinder, who Mr. Attack Dog, and then Tommy Davis, yeah. Mr. Chihuahua Attack Dog, <laughs> uh, even worse. Uh, and then of course, Miscavige's antagonist. And I always wondered would Scientology have had better, some better press relations if they kept some, if they kept Hebrew well, for it, as possible. Somebody it, it liked never, it. yeah, it never could under Miscavige because Miscavige is uh, an incredibly jealous person. He's a very narcissistic, very psychopathic. And so if anybody got any power, then he would have to destroy them. Right. So Heber was a really well liked guy and really did a good job. And what he did, right. so Miscavige tried to destroy him. And he did, you know, he Classic. did that with Mike. He destroyed Mike. Right. Um, sure. He kind of kind of destroyed Tommy. Tommy kind oh, of escaped. Well, I know Tommy, that's a whole weird thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I knew you. I knew Tommy really well. God, um, what was he like? Was he just as much of a I, well I got no, I got along with him great. I got along with him great because because I was kind of like like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, I, he was, I, I knew Tommy when he, he dropped out of college and he was married to this beautiful young Belgian woman and he oh. was a celebrity wrangler at right. CC. Ann Archer's son, if I'm not Yeah, mistaken. Ann Archer's, yeah, he's Ann Archer's son. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, he was, you know, and then he caught Miscavige's eye and he's like, oh, he's a good looking guy. And he already comes with you know, five thousand dollar suits and a and a and a hundred fifty thousand dollar BMW. He's like right. ready made to be on Miscavige. That's interesting. Team. So, so Miscavige saw that visual, and he Probably. was like, "You're perfect. that's what I always thought." Right. Yeah, because I mean, I remember the day that like I never got asked to do these like these. I call them the flying monkeys. I call them the, you know, like the the guys that Miscavige sends out to do his bidding, like right. when Paul ha well, like when Paul Haggis did his thing, right? Sure. And um. And, and so then, uh, I don't remember who it was. It was either Tommy or this other very evil person by the name of Dave Bloomberg. Uh, the okay. difference is Tom, Tommy's a really smart guy and Dave Bloomberg's a fucking clown. Okay. Um, like literally he's, he's like a, he's like a soccer hooligan in an expensive suit. You know, Funny, was like he was another Dave, spokesperson as well or no, no, Dave is a hatchet. He's a hatchet man. Okay. Yeah. No, you couldn't let him be a spokesperson. He would embarrass you. But I got somebody came and grabbed me and they're saying, we're going to Paul Haggis's office when Paul had an office in West L.A., right? We're going to go to Paul Haggis's office and we're going to talk him. We're going to try to talk him down, right? Because Paul had sent this letter of resignation out. And Paul is a very gracious guy. And he just wanted to be heard. He was really pissed off because of the treatment of his two gay daughters. And he wanted to be heard. He wanted Tommy Davis to go on record as saying we are not anti LGBTQIA. He I, didn't, I don't him. know any of this. Did they, they didn't treat Paul Haggis, his daughters well, or did they, or no, or he has two, he has two gay daughters who I've I known since know they, okay. Yeah. I knew him since they were little girls and they're just delightful people. Cool. And um, so they were, there was a thing that happened with prop eight, right? Prop eight in California sure. was it, yeah. quality. Sure. Yeah, so there was uh, a thing happened at the San Diego Org where somebody at the San Diego Org made a public statement 
against Prop 8 or in favor of Prop 8. I, I forget which one made you Prop uh, 8, it, Prop 8 was, oddly enough, Prop 8 would have restricted things. So in favor yeah, of Yeah, so Prop yes on Prop 8, right? right? So somebody at the San Diego org uh, was so that's promoting... That's open up a can of worms. Totally, because yeah. totally, right? And so, uh, so Paul just wanted Tommy to say... That's wrong. We shouldn't have done it. And he wanted to make a huh. statement because I bet. his his own daughters were ostracized for being gay. They were right. treated separately at Celebrity Center, you know, because Scientology is a very anti-gay. And yes. so Paul was like perfectly willing to meet with um to anyway. I you know, I I don't know if he wants me to tell the story, but I spoke with I communicated with Paul recently, and he 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 there's something that happened in our meeting. And I'm the only person who's no longer in Scientology that was at that meeting that can testify to what happened. Okay. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's yeah. in my book. It's absolutely disgusting. So Paul was like, yeah, I'll see you. So I, I get this. Hey, come on. We're going out to Paul Haggis's office. So it's me and, and Tommy and this writer that I worked with, this guy named whatever. It doesn't matter. He's not even that great a writer. But a guy that I worked with and uh, who was a pro, not a Sea Org guy. He was a, a hired guy like me. Um, and Dave Bloomberg. And so we went out to Paul's office and we went into the conference room and we sat down and, uh, and we just talked and, and Paul was just like, look, Tommy, like, like he ain't, I ain't going to back down on this, but you right. need to make a statement. You need to make a statement. The reason that I resigned from Scientology is because of this issue and you need to make a That's statement. Right. And so some, for some reason, I'd have to look at my notes. Uh, Paul brought up the name uh, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Okay. And he's talking to him and he says, listen, everybody makes mistakes. And he says also, he's talking about the beatings. I know about the beatings. I know that Miscavige has been beating his staff. And this is when one, he's still in Scientology. Paul? Yeah, he's saying he knows about these beatings. Well, he knew about them when he was in. He's heard wow. about them. Okay. Right. He never witnessed them. I witnessed right. physical violence against staff members. Oh, wow. Um, okay. But um, not beating, but I witnessed Miscavige's physical right. violence against right. staff members. And so he brings this thing up. He says, look, everybody makes mistakes. I think at that time, Paul was working on a script about Martin Luther King Jr. So I think it was on his mind. And he said, like, even Martin Luther King Jr. made mistakes. And Dave Bloomberg, right. I kid you not, he jumped up out of his chair and he looked at Paul and he said, how dare you how dare you compare a great man like David Miscavige to Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> yeah, and and it was just like <laughs> that's, no, that's and, and it's like no, this is the this is the attitude. No, you don't know. This is the wow. attitude. This is the attitude. Like it's <laughs> I mean, these are terrible people that are right, just man. like Right. They're, they're incredibly, uh, incredibly brainwashed. Really, so. you have to be that brainwashed. Really, is is scavenged. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's 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 pretty bad. It's uh, yeah, it's uh. Oh, here's all right. Let me ask you because you knew Miscavige somewhat well. Yeah, uh, I did. Did does he? This is something nobody has ever asked. Me might have never talked about it because, of course, Scientology is their own internal world, and everything out is not important. But did he have any politics? Did he? You know, was he, did he lean conservative? Did he have any racist point of views? Anti, yeah, he was aggressive? totally a racist. He was, yeah, he, okay, yeah, so he and his dad. Well, okay, let, let me just qualify that. Does using lots of racial slurs and telling lots of racial jokes yes. make somebody a racist? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay, so did he identify so he as like, a racist? He called people like racial slurs and stuff. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, he and his, he didn't, and he really didn't like Jews. He didn't wow, like really? Jews. Yeah, which is weird because he had all these Jews on his staff, and my background <laughs> is Jewish, and I, right, I did okay, a ton, ton to of myself. yeah, and I did a ton of great stuff for him. But he used to refer to when the Lawrence Wright article came out. Remember in the New Yorker before sure, he wrote of course, the book, famous. Right? Yeah, yeah. When he Clear. did the when he did the interview with Paul Agus, the apostate, right? He did that thing. Uh, after ever since that happened, Miscavige would always refer to those. Goddamn New York Jews. <laughs> you know, that whole group of people. I mean, I don't think Lawrence Wright is Jewish, 
but that whole sort of group of people that control very waspy yeah the, but, yeah. The, yeah he's he's obviously not jewish uh, but right. and that's anyway anybody could be jewish but he he really was in a, in a stink about you know these new york jews that controlled the press right. and you know said all these bad things right. about him and he also had a big problem with the why Hollywood he got jews. along with farrakhan so well why him and farrakhan are you know uh sweet. well because they're both jew haters well, yeah, yeah it could be one, out of many no, I, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think because I, I don't think that explains that. I, I think basically Miscavige is uh, apolitical, asexual, so, right. a, a, a hole. He's, uh, so a, he wouldn't care. So he wouldn't care if it was <laughs> or Bush if you knew him in the 90s or never gave a thought. Or Gore, no, Bush. no. Yeah, politics was because he they're above politics. They, right? I was going to say it, it's beneath them, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it's beneath them. When right. Trump got elected, and for somehow the demographics of Scientology had started to lean very right. Like sure. I was in this, you know, I was in this villa, Joy Villa, you know, singer. Republican yeah, 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 yeah. She, she was a little Trump star. Um, yeah. But I was like in this minority of like pro gay rights, very liberal, raised right. by communists, Jewish. But, right. Like my and mother was like, "What the fuck are you doing in Scientology?" It was just, it was just, anyway, it was whatever. Um, <laughs> but it, it, the demographics had started to lean really right. Like there's right. this one woman, I can't think of her name. There's a video of her on January 6th with a megaphone. Um, she, she's an attorney. I can't think of her name. Okay. I mean, she was there. She, she fled to Mexico with her family, took a vacation. You know, when wow. the shit hit the fan, right. Uh, right. she's oh, like yeah. an anti-vaxxer. She's a big attorney, anti-vaxxer, very pro-Trump. She was literally at the insurrection wow. with a megaphone. Hardcore. She never went in. I don't think she went in. I think she was just on the grounds. So Pretty Scientology, the, it, demographically, it had started, it sort of was kind of liberal in the 70s. And then it sort of became more libertarian. And then it became more right. conservative. And then it was like, okay, here's the deal. Like Los Angeles is divided up into the voting precincts, right? Okay. There's only one. I don't know how many there are. There are many, many precincts, voting precincts in Los Angeles. It's be 30. Only one, at least. Only one of those precincts went for Trump. And that was the one where Scientology headquarters is. Ha, huh, really? Yeah, that's, that's a fact. That, that's just a, 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 a yeah. That's just a fact. You can look that shit up. So, Miss Cavage comment on it or no? No, but he was freaking out because huh. because it was starting to be dissension among Scientologists. Scientologists were starting to polarize because remember Trump was such a polarizing Funny. is such a polarizing character Funny. that even even within it. yeah even within a group like Scientology it was starting to polarize the members, right? Funny. And of course, a, a lot of people were like, yeah, a lot of people, whatever. But so Miscavige, he actually made a reference. He wrote a speech in, in the, the New Year's after Trump was elected. Miscavige gave a speech and he made a very long-winded, very oblique reference to the fact that this is not the time we should be thinking about politics. He Funny. was uh, he was concerned Funny. about the, the the Trump what what should we call it the Trump effect, right right the the polarizing effect. You're going to be more loyal Trump. to Trump than him. That's first. In well, that. not so much that, but you or would have science parishioners. Science. The other ones, right? Yeah, yeah so and maybe Trump people would like be it, less yeah. willing. He to join. Them. Right. Yeah, it does. It does. But yeah, it doesn't matter because that's been published. And plus, everybody knows that it's an anti-gay group, and so nobody wants to have anything to do well, with right. it. Right. Right. I mean, that's it's written in their scripture, which is now, of course, I mean, here's here's the here's the other fun thing that I want to well, ask. So hold, on, hold on. What were you what were you going to say? It's now, of course, what? Uh, it's all in, it's written in the scripture. So no, now, of course, you could find it. Yeah, which it is, is. It is. Which is why is here's is one of the reasons for the massive decline. Uh, you know, I think that some could say it was starting with the anonymous protest. Some say started earlier. Some say started later. But I guess it's like you had no way in the in the eighties and the seventies. I like I assume you have to find out about the Scientolog Scientological belief of gay people deep way way into the whole 
investment of it, right? So I assume no, you would- no, no, oh, no. It, so you knew that, no, but you were still it's... like, okay, I'll put that to the side. I mean, look, I've I I don't blame you. You're brainwashed. It makes sense. I I survived two suicide attempts. My head was pretty My fucked God. up. I'm sure. Okay, so I'm like, sure. No, I'm not blaming like, you. Yeah. So um, so it's amazing. Really hmm. What's that? Yeah, because I'll, I'll tell you why. Just to qualify that, um, it's in the Dianetics book. And Dianetics. Well, is right. I guess new. it would be one. So if you read the full book, right? It's not in the. the yeah, you book. may not read that book. You may not read that book for a while, but it's it's out in plain right. sight because it's in the Dianetics book. It's at goddamn public bookstores. I sold 10 million copies of a book that talks about how, you know, quote unquote, the homosexual is like a sex pervert. You know, it's just like horrible, horrible stuff. Um, and how did I justify that? I don't know. How did I, I, I think in my mind, I mean, what I think is I always sort of thought, um, well, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into it, but people are just going to eviscerate me for even saying this. But, but the thing is, is that it was written in the 50s. So I'm like, well, it was written in the 50s and the cops were like going into gay clubs and they were beating people on the head. And you know, I'll bet if Hubbard ever came back, he'd probably revise it. You know, you kind of do this little dance in the back of your mind. You do this crazy shit because you're really, really brainwashed. It's like, you know, it's like, and it's tough to come back. I mean, you know, I know people that don't want to associate with me because I wrote it, you know, because I was once in Scientology. Right. Uh -huh. But then, you know, if, if they don't associate with you, then people can't associate with Aaron or Kelly or, or any. What's other. that? I'm saying if people don't want to associate you because of your past supposed past sins, then people should not be able to associate with Aaron or Kelly Copter or any of these, these well-known figures. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, uh -huh. uh, I, I get, I get where you're coming from completely. Yeah. Uh, but that is fascinating. Right. And you do, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting thing because the, but part of me thinks like the, the anti-homosexuality is bizarre is included. And I'll only say this, and it's a weird connection to make, but one could argue the early fifties was one of the eras, the start of the era where people began to follow secular guidebooks and movements. And with L. Ron Hubbard's relationship to Jack Parsons and people in the satanic you know, world. I will say one of the good things that they supported in the 1950s and the late 40s was that homosexuality was okay. So I and I am wondering, like, why L. Ron Hubbard wanted to include it in Dianex because he was not catering to the churchgoers, who was probably 90% of the country at that time. But there was this burgeoning, even before Woodstock, the hippie movement. You know, the 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 beginning of the B era. There was this movement of people in the 1950s who were like, I'm not following traditional life. And it's like, well, why did L. Ron Hubbard still include all the anti-gay stuff? It's it's even back in the 50s, it was not in vogue for the for the new agey thing, which was a thing even back in the 50s. Well, but that's, it, I probably don't have the answer to that. Yeah, I mean, they didn't take it out of the DSM until, uh, what was it, in the 70s? Well, that's right, right, right. No, of course. And it was in the yeah, psychological so, handbooks and, and certainly. I'm yeah, and so the other thing is Hubbard took a lot. This is, I'm kind of just riffing on this now. Dodge, right, but I, but, sure. But, but I, I think this could have something to do with it. Hubbard took a lot from the military. It, there were two things that's that he was point. infatuated right. with. He was infatuated so with the idea that he was some kind of war hero. Right. And he was infatuated with the idea that he was some kind of great scientist. And then there's right. all these other little shiny baubles about being an aviator and an artist and all this right. other complete. Right. And it's like he dabbled in the Satanism, like he dabbled in the being. Aviator. Yeah. But that was, that was, uh, that was like, that was an early, like a youthful phase that he went through. That was right. Just, he was not an established figure at that point. No. Yeah. And, that, and he never met Alistair Crowley and a lot right. of those people, you know, and he ripped off Jack Parsons and stole yes. his girlfriend and his business yes. and like all kinds of bad shit. But the right. thing is, is that, you know, back the thinking in the military, especially in intelligence, and Hubbard was very much ear to the ground when it came to the standards and procedures of U.S. intelligence, right? It was very much thought of that being a homosexual was a liability because it made you open to blackmail. So right. he was, that's, that's really the tune that he that's was singing. Right. So it was, yeah. it was 
tactful is more tactical. Yeah. Now, of course, tactical today, right? Yeah, today I'm sure the CIA, you know, because they're always like during the you know during the civil rights movement, their number one target was young black males because yes. they made great agents because everybody would foreigners foreign uh, powers would believe that they turned against their own country. So they're pretty devious. So you know, today I'm sure they're targeting. Uh, homosexuals for, right. for recruitment because they're like, you know, and and, so and whatever. I, I mean, I believe in affirmative action. There should be gay sure. CIA agents. I mean, sure. that's what you want to do. You should be allowed to do that. Right. Oh, that's interesting. But no, I always wonder where the, where these little nuggets come from. Of you know, I, I never really thought about it. But he took right. a lot from the military. There's a lot right. of policy that a lot of us learned and did. That, you know, like there's a thing called the completed staff work, a CSW, which is the exact form by which you write a proposal to get permission to get something or to acquire something. And one day somebody handed me this booklet up at Gold. It was the Air Force Manual and it had it was called the same thing, completed staff work. It's out of the Air Force Manual. So he took all this stuff Funny. from the military and I'm sure he took their attitude uh, right. about um, about uh, same sex, uh, you know. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. And but they've never, they've never. I mean, that's still in. I guess you can't change Dianetics. You can't really secretly delete things out of it. No, you can't. And it's not like uh, you know, it's it's not like, yeah, they're not going to change anything. That's why Scientology right. is just doomed. It's just it's one right. of the reasons it's doomed. I mean, the Mormons have managed. Uh, when All I was right. the, yeah, they've changed a lot of things. I remember being up at the Olympics and whenever that was, two thousand two. And uh, the Mormons, they banned uh, proselytizing during the Olympics. That was part of the requirement from the Olympic Committee, right. no proselytizing. And so right. uh, I used to go up there a lot for the Sundance Film Festival. So I was walking up and down, uh, I don't know, in, in Park City, walking up and down Main Street. And there were these uh, fundamental, FLD, you know, the, the fundamental guys, they were right. sneaking in the their pamphlets. Part. Yeah, they were right. sneaking pamphlets in. And they're anti-Mormon pamphlets because they want people to join the fundamentalists. And one of the points of the pamphlet, it said that the Mormons have changed. If you look at the Book of Mormon, the original Book of Mormon, they've changed a thousand items from the original have, one. Yes, haven't they ever? Yes. Yeah. Very and Scientology, so. will, they will never do that. I mean, Miscavige might do it because he's changed a lot of things. But he doesn't right. change them to make the scene better or to survive or to have a state or anything like that. Right. Fascinating. And I, I, I heard Miscavige is pretty homophobic himself anyway. You've heard uh, what? Miscavige is pretty homophobic himself anyway. <laughs> Extremely. Or at least yes. use, right, use gay as an insult, certainly, to people. Yeah, and no, he was, um, he used to use, I'm not going to use the words. No uh, need. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. not going to do it. It, it. But he sure. used to, he used to use very homophobic slur language. Right. Right. Like, uh, yeah, like Other when Mike words. when Mike Rinder yeah. escaped, I remember hearing him say, "Oh, Mike can just go and something right. of something, and that's how he can make money." Right. Like he he you know said, "Oh, he could just go perform," you know. Right. He had this weird, do you ever find like when you were talking to him that he had this almost like childish frat boy sense of humor? Like all of oh, yeah, jokes, totally. the jokes that I've ever totally. heard. Sounds like a sixteen-year-old would say them. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I mean, he was. Right. I mean, he joined the Sea Org when he was, I don't know, 12, 30, 40, 50, something like that. Right. I mean, sure. you know, it's kind of like that's that, that's where you stop. You just stop there. You don't. Fascinating, right? Yeah. Right. So that, he, that was the last time he was in the real world and whatever, right? So it's like. Yeah, and you know, his yeah. dad was kind of similar. He was kind of didn't. He was kind of you know a, a band leader, you know, a trumpet player. A, you know, it was kind of like a lounge lizard kind of guy and yeah. in Philly uh -huh. and had really bad taste or no taste. I mean, that is one thing about Miscavige. He's got like zero taste. If somebody didn't give him a book or tell him what was cool or tell, he wouldn't know. And then once okay. he once he finds out and owns it, then everybody has to do it. Like this right. is the way to do it because Dave said to do it this way. Exactly. This is how you tie a tie. It's got to be like this. Crease has to be perfect. Are you going to go to crabbing? I mean, yeah. Was he responsible for creating all the uniforms and stuff? I always wondered that. With the um, well, it was his idea, but I can tell you. Okay, so the uniforms they're wearing now at the Cosplay of Orgs, these hideous uniforms, 
Yeah, well, what is the deal with the gold? It's like the gold lining, and the, it's a two tone tie with the top. Yeah, well, the they're 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 color coded. They're color coded based on the church. I was going to look the guy's ah. name up, but okay. So here's the deal. So, Muscat. So those were done probably in twenty. I don't. I can't remember twenty fourteen. Whenever those came out, twenty maybe earlier than that. Whenever they came out, they were designed by this guy. His name's Richard somebody or other. I'd have to look it up. And, and his big claim to fame at that point, his most recent thing, was he designed all the wardrobe for Delta Airlines, right? Ha! Huh. Interesting. Okay, does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, a so this guy, this, uh, this guy had... Okay, so I looked at this recently because I was curious. Okay, so... So Delta Airlines is now four generations away from those that wardrobe. In other words, they've gone through I four reckon. entire iterations of updates with four different designers right? since that guy. And right. the thing about Miscavige, which is the same thing with Hubbard, they actually believe that you can do thing something once right and you never have to do it again. Never have to touch it, right. But, yeah, and the second you do it, I mean, that shit looks so out of date. Like if you look at the new Delta stuff, it's all sort of athleisure based, and it's really like right. very, very contemporary, and but, but still very tasteful, yeah. and just you know, so, like yeah, I thought that was really funny. But that's interesting. What's that? And that is one I thought it was too casual. The Delta uniforms. Oh, there's, the new ones. A, yeah, I don't know. As a yeah, men's the, fashion guy, there's a part of me that likes that uniform with the two tone. And it's, yeah, it's no, I know, I, I know. I, I think this guy Richard. He did a good job. I mean, he's a really good designer. He he did all the ideal work stuff. I know because right. I had to put on Miscavige. He said, I want you to put on a fashion show. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, do like Paris runway, banners, crowds. I need to do a video to present this to all the orgs. So I had to do this stupid funny. fashion thing. That's funny. Yeah, it was fun. That's I hired a bunch of models, you know. Yeah. That sounds kind of cool. Uh, but again, yeah. you're saying. David Miscavige asexuality, assuming he wasn't interested in any of the models or anything. Or yeah, I, I I I don't have yeah I've never been able to really determine with certainty his um, his sexuality. So that's what we talked about last time. What is the deal with him and Lou? Do you think? What is do I think? A, yeah, is there a relationship? Is it is it? I don't. You know, I don't really know. I mean, I I just know what I've seen. I mean, I don't know what they were doing in that bedroom all night long. Right. I don't know, but I he's been never been, like touchy with each other. They never like look stare into each other's eyes. No, I've never different. really seen that. But what I've seen is, hold on, I'm gonna have to make sure it's not take your hurt. time. Yeah, don't let me keep. Yeah, it okay, fine. So no, no, it's still, I got time. It's totally fine. Um, no, I think. I mean, here's the thing. Like when I when I knew Shelly, when she was part of his entourage, Shelly would always be behind him slightly in a subservient position with a pad of paper or a tape recorder. Right. 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 Lou yes. would always be slightly ahead of him off to the side, Funny. like a gate, like a gatekeeper. Right. Funny. So Lou's a veteran. It's been around yeah. for a while too. Yeah. Glowering at people, right? Like she's going to take the bullet. Right. So it was a whole different dynamic than Sorry. he and she right. way different. And, and right. you know, so I don't know, sexual relationship maybe, probably, I think, uh, in right. a very kind of perverse way. Right, uh, right, right. In the way that he, and that's it, uh, you met, you must have met Shelly a handful of times, I assume. I did in the, in the early, I, I, yeah, yeah, I did, I did. But, you know, my interaction with her was, it was kind of social okay. because we had to interact on things like, you know, birthdays and Christmas presents. And like, she wasn't like, she didn't coordinate my work in any way. Like she didn't run messages from Dave to me. They would right. just come down as, you know, type paper. So, or he would come see me personally or something. So, but I didn't know her. I ran into her. I was probably the last person that's out of Scientology that had, saw her. I saw her in two, I think it was 2008. I ran into her. Interesting. And then she's still at the, where do you think she's at now? I assume. I think she's at the the Twin Peaks facility, the CST facility. Right. Yeah, and, and, I, and they kind of like Heber Gench, I guess she's being treated relatively all things. 
relative. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know that he. I don't know that he was being treated well at all. I mean, I think he probably has a decent old age home that they're paying for. I don't know if it's right. any good. I mean, like for the old age home. And, yeah, I, I mean, Shelly. What's that? It's just weird they these the they keep these people that they deem useless in orbit and in their location. I guess it's to keep them from you know doing things like you and Aaron and other people are doing. Um, but it's a bizarre thing. Yeah. It's, yeah, well, they don't like to let people go. I mean, they they, they think really they're going to be, they think they're going to be around for eternity, and they're going to all keep coming back. So, oh, this is this is a really random thing I want to ask you. Speaking of which, speaking of eternity, well, when you were being audited, did you ever have expressed memories of a past life? What were they? And do you think no. there's ever any? <laughs> wow, well, huh, really? Your whole no, time? No, I had no. I had I had expressed imagination. Okay, because that it's 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 like yes. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm not going to adjudicate on whether we live before or we're going to live again. Well, we don't know because so. because I don't know. It's a total mystery, right? And unfortunately, you know, that's the, the a sort of way to take. yeah, it's a mystery. And 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 one of the great the great adventures and joys of life is being able to embrace and deal with that mystery. So I yeah. did have that. I did have that short circuited for a long time and I absolutely 100% had imaginations that I believed were past lives that were all kinds of crazy space opera stuff and sp spaceships, cool. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's just like, it, yeah, it's all imagination. It's all, but that's, all so you get on it. When you see this stuff, would you like relive it? And would it be like an awesome rock musical? Be like, nah, 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 and then you're well, on the spaceship. <laughs> here's the thing. Like I mentioned earlier, that the the emitter is the it, it's the arbiter of your truth in other right. words if you say no there's nothing and the needle does this and the auditor says well, what was that and you right. say that wasn't anything and they say well i want you to take another look right and so you go okay i'll take a look and they and they and they go yeah that 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 and they're pounding right. on you right. that that thing so you're like you want to eventually get the fuck out of there so you're like well i'm seeing uh no nah, this isn't real they're saying no just say it the meter says it's real Right. So now you're like thinking about an old episode of Star Trek and the meter scene is thinking about it, or is it somehow you actually well, no, you, you, you know you get you get pic like you get pictures oh of God. movies or all kinds of crazy right. different stuff, and then the meter says it's real. So people are like, Yeah, that's real. And so, you never you know, questioned that. I assume when you were going through the audience, you were so brainwashed where like you're trying to think of yeah. and then you thought, yeah. Oh, that's real. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing is, I now know that I was brainwashed, and there's a lot of people out there who were never in Scientology, and they have no idea how brainwashed they still are, because right. one of the at least the benefit. I mean, this is this is kind of not worth it as a benefit, but at least I have the benefit of being able to uh, deconstruct my own conditioning, and a lot of people yeah. never get there. They no. never become self-aware enough to know what is conditioning and, and right. what they are. And, you know, like Carl Jung said, like the greatest, what did he say? Uh, it's like the greatest, uh, the, you know, the greatest thing you can ever achieve is to know who you are. And so a lot of people never have the, 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 uh, the urgency or the necessity to understand what is their conditioning. So at okay. least I feel I feel fortunate in that way, in that I've been w willing to put myself in a position of uh, like on a on a journey, a spiritual journey, a mental health journey. I mean, I was so delighted to find out that there's so many great mental health practitioners who have taken great things from Eastern religion, especially Buddhism. A lot of modern therapies are based on Buddhist principles. Yeah. I was so delighted to find this out. So well, you know, join Buddhism instead of the other uh, stuff. That? No, I said probably easier to join Buddhism than Scientology. Well, but the, uh, yeah, it is. But well, the, the no, as far as I know, yeah, I'm not joining Buddhism. I'm not a Buddhist. I'm not joining anything. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but they don't. I mean, Buddhism doesn't believe in sin. They don't believe uh, in in uh, you know that you have to interact with an organization in order to be free. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, things about it that are positives. You know, while we're on the subject, I mean, Hubbard was really fond of saying that Scientology was a cousin to Buddhism, but it's not. Right, it has nothing that. to do with it. If it's close to anything, it's close to uh, uh, like a religion, like Catholicism. I'm not putting Catholicism down at all, but sure. um, 
only because no, Catholicism is very fixated on the idea of sin and sure. of the idea of confession. And well, you know, indulgences, buying indulgences. Yeah, in the there's a lot, there's many more parallels between yeah. Scientology and the Catholic Church than there is between Scientology and Buddhism. Oh, did Miscavige have a mod? I'm sure he never talked about other religions, but did he ever have a modern religious figure or historical religious figure that he respected? You know, did he ever think that? Uh, do you ever comments yeah. like Terry Falwell or like, you know, no, 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 no. L. Ron Hubbard. Everybody was a fake. Everybody was a phony. There, there were no, well, that's it, right. It's a, it's a conversation yeah. we get to next. It's just Hubbard. Right. I mean, I secretly think that he very much studied Brigham Young. I mean, that's just my thing. Because that, that um, would make sense. I, you know, I'm sure he would never say it out loud, but I'm sure that L. Ron Hubbard fancied himself a Brigham, the, the Brigham Young like type. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Uh, Hubbard was like John Smith. Funny, Hubbard was Cabot, yeah, right. Would be the Brigham yeah, Young. Hubbard was the guy that found the golden tablets under the tree, right? right, right well, with, yeah, with the right. white with the white lizard and all the other right. stuff, right? No, because right. if you think about it, you know, Brigham Young he trafficked people from Europe. He drove them, drove them across the U.S., killed sure. a lot of them, right? Sure. drove them to death. And he did it just so that Mormonism could become so dug in that you could never get rid of it. Right. And, you know, Miscavige is trying to do the same thing with Clearwater. He doesn't give a shit that the, he doesn't care that the churches are empty, the quote unquote churches are empty. If there's no staff or there's no people just got to put enough buildings there and own enough of Clearwater so they can never get rid of us. And right. that's his legacy. That's what I think. That's, and he he right. said enough things to me that I, I didn't just make that up. I mean, that was suggested to me by many conversations. I mean, even when we were setting up Scientology Media Productions, when we were setting up the broadcast facility, he sent a bunch of us, I mean, in two teams on two separate occasions, up to BYU to visit BYU TV. He's like, yeah, go up and see what the Wow, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. shit. Okay, yeah. huh? Yeah, and we, we spent the day hanging out with, you know, the – the BYU uh, broadcast people. And then Funny. they sent us, they sent us, you know, into Salt Lake city uh, to get like, Do a any of you tour. think the other was weird because it might be, I thought it was totally fucking freaking weird. I thought it was unbelievably weird. I thought, I know what he's trying to do. I know right. exactly what he's, I mean, B BYU TV. I mean, they have BYU football. So like they're legit. Right. So sure. like, and then they, they, they hire out, they like have a bunch of shows like Netflix like family shows. Right. And they hire those out. They, they have in-house wow. producers, I hire him out. I'm, you know, Dave's he's trying to do everything in house, everything himself. That's a whole nother show on uh, Scientology Media Productions because that right. place is a hundred million dollar uh, complete fiasco. Right. I'd imagine. Well, here's here's a all, other thing I want to talk about, uh, ask you about, and not not to belabor the point that you got uh, a decent amount of cash for your work, but your work was super obviously important, and it, it was kind of the engine. How were you able to get away with paying, getting paid a fair wage? Because, like, did they view media people as so important or behind the scenes product production? I'm gonna change that to production. Yeah, they yeah. View production people equally as important from lawyers, where they're like, we have to pay them because yeah. I mean, I power. mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. There were lawyers that made more than I did, but not many. I bet. I'm sure. Right, but you. Yeah, I like Monique Muffins Yingling. Lawyers got paid by them. Any real money. Which is like Corinne Powell. I remember when I got attacked by Corinne Powell. Yeah. I assumed that she was making four hundred thousand dollars a year because she was yeah. a spokesperson for a billion dollar organization. So it's right. like Heber, Corinne, Mike Rinder, Tommy Davis. My assumption is none of them made more than a hundred dollars a week. So it's like it's interesting. It's like <laughs> I guess do they reserve real salaries? Why was your work so? I'm not, I don't think you're arrogant. I don't think you're, you, you say your work is this important, but it is. Why was your work so much more important than the spokesperson's work? Where because, because, well, I wasn't in the Sea Org for one thing. Right. So they had to pay me professional That's rate. That's true. Isn't that, that's it. But then why wouldn't they get an internal Sea Org person who was super talented? Um, Maybe I did finally get one. I, it took me seven years to train him. I was part of my Funny. disappear, disappear quietly out the back door because I was not wanting to, you know, just leave. Um, right. but you and, were there early on. So I guess they knew you and your talents since the seventies. Yeah. So okay. Just, yeah, I, I tell you, you asked me why they thought it was valuable. They thought it was valuable because Hubbard said it was valuable because in 1963, L. Ron Hubbard did a film of himself saying yes. 
that the only way to train people in Scientology is with films and Scientology that. won't make it without films, blah, 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 blah. And then they were never able to pull it off. They were never able to pull it off. So essentially all of forward progress, all the plans, all the expansion, everything in Scientology was stopped because they couldn't make films. Okay. Well, Battlefield Earth is a work of art, but that's not, that's a movie. That's not a film. Yes. That's true. That's different. Right. Cause it's, back yeah, then, it is. it's all about these for purpose. I'm talking very film. specifically about right. films to train people right. how to do Scientology. So right. that's the reason that it was important. And when I right. went up the there point. and then I, they were like, well, what do you, you know, I'm like, this is what we get paid. And they're like, okay. And then, right. you know, I would fight with them constantly to get as much money as I could because sure. over the years I hated them and I wanted right. to make yeah. enough money to get the hell out. Get out. And, and tell my right. story and write a book. And I was kind of not really able to pull it off because, right. you know, I've been, anyway, whatever. I'm, I'm working on it. Well, I, uh, I'm glad you're finally doing it now. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you okay. want to impugn, if you want to think badly of me for that, go ahead. No, not at all. Far, what far the hell are you me. people doing with your life? So, well, I, anyway. I think there's a, there's a misconception too. You know, maybe you might have gotten six or even seven digits, but not so much where you could live off that for the rest of your life and, and live in a Yeah, family. no, between taxes yeah, and a mortgage and two yeah, kids right. and a divorce right. and all right. the other stuff. And I'm people, sure. Yeah, by the time you're done with it, it's like right. I had enough money to live on for three years and now right. I'm I'm hustling, you know? So right. it's like whatever. Right. So it's, I, I, want, I, I, I wasn't great that. with money. I wasn't great with money because all I ever did was work. Aaron so it's says, not like, I was just not, what, whatever. Home. I was right. Or I grew up in one. Right. No, I'm glad, I'm glad he clarified that. But that was... That the, that was the interesting part to me is like, oh, well, here's the other thing I want to ask. So when you were doing this important work, yeah. did you have the 12 hour days or would you at least have manageable eight hour days, nine to five? Uh, uh, no, my, I mean, it kind of depended. Mine were a little better. I was okay. like, like I, I didn't have to, there's things I wasn't required to do. Like these guys, they got to show up to what they call a muster every morning. It's an assembly. They got to jump out of bed and go to muster and they do a head count. They want to make sure nobody escaped. Right. right. So I didn't have to go to muster. So I had a 9 a.m. call because I was like, I was like, we used to do these real early calls. Oh, like you had a call. call. You were on call and part of that whole. Well, because it's a film. You have a call time. Oh, right. Like, of course. You can't right. make a film if you don't have a call time. Right. Right. And so, right. Um, but usually the call times up there, they were better than Hollywood because I used, you know, I made sure that they were because in Hollywood, everybody wants to go home. They see their yes. family, so everybody shows That's up what at I work. Was wondering. And stuff. Right. No, so right. usually like the call time would be like 9 a.m. So right. I would sleep until 8:30 and right. you know, make a protein shake in my room, take a quick shower, Just go to the set, right? right? And then, you know, after dinner, we would do whatever, whatever. I and then I was usually done by 10. It's still right. a really long That's night. a hell of a that's so they really they weren't you to the bone, though. That's a yeah, yeah. It was, it was a lot. Right. It was so a lot, it, but I, right. I was I was out of there most weekends. But it was, it was right. a lot. I mean, right. when you consider the work that I did and how much, uh, how much work, how much money that I made them, and you know, I'm not proud of that. I mean, I I I have nightmares about it every day, about the fact that I made these films, and I made them, you know, at a level where I was I was what I think the best way I put it was I said that I. I, I compromise my morals for the sake of my aesthetic goals. Okay. So, because I, I really did believe in this mission and I thought auditing was really helping people. Your life, man. I mean, you were on heroin, right? I yeah. Mean, I did think they saved my life, but you know, they actually didn't you, when I was, when, I know they didn't, but that's an easy way to get brainwashed. And yeah. And, yeah. You know. Big time, big time. Uh, uh, I, I do want to go over some, co all, all of these are good by the way. Uh, but I want to go over a few comments. Artsy, Artsy Targsy is a huge supporter of yours. Uh, yeah, so I appreciate that. Yeah. I have some of my good friends are here. The people oh, who've read good. my book and I've interacted um, with them and they're awesome. great people. Awesome. Awesome. And I really I appreciate that. Hello, Leslie. Yeah. Artsy Targsy. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, there's some cool, uh, she's a big supporter. So I want to give her Artsy Targsy a shout out. And she, she has a video about doing it on a potato she said in early comments so do check out the youtube page of uh artsy tartsy oh um, yeah for sure for sure i definitely want to see that uh apologies to the dog she commented the dog has had enough already but he's fine yeah, your dog uh, is being really well behaved I thank you yeah no he really is he's he's pretty he's pretty quiet chilled out pretty chilled um, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think those are mainly the comments uh, I want. Oh, one one thing, random thing I wanted to ask you. Okay. Like one of one comment was like, "Thank God, Miscavige didn't have any kids or whatever." <laughs> uh, and I was gonna ask him, ask you, have you ever seen Miscavige with kids, or of course with his niece, who is now making her own way in the anti? No. No, I mean when my older son was a was an infant, he was up there with his mom visiting me, and Miscavige was like all holding him and like goo goo gaga. And so he, he was he, he would have those rare bursts of he oh, is an, he is a narcissist in the worst possible funny. way. Funny, so he's always aware of how people are looking at how he. Yeah, so he yeah. is able to calculate the right way to be in any right. situation. So he doesn't come um, off always as a cold prick necessarily. No, he's able to do that. Fine. He's able to sort of be charming. I right. mean, he's also really tone deaf. Like I remember at the the opening of the broadcast facility, uh, Scientology Media Productions, he 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 plagiarized this quote about, um, you know, if you don't write your own story, somebody else will write it for you. Yes. I forget who said that, but it's it's a very not well him. often. He did not I know. He no, no, it's that. a it's a very often repeated, uh, and it's rarely ascribed to the right person. No. The, right. Uh, but he went off in this role, and and then one of the, and then he ended the whole thing by saying that Scientology is the coolest religion on earth. Okay, and this is so tone deaf because he was all he was he was kind of fond of trying to invite other religious leaders. I don't yes. think there was any there at that one, you know, right. like maybe, uh, you know, an, an Islamic person, a cleric sure. uh, and maybe a rabbi and maybe a, you know, a minister. And could you imagine people like of other religious faiths sitting in the audience, listening to him say Scientology is the coolest religion. Basically he's saying we're cooler than you. Oh, yeah, right. So it's just, right. he was incredibly toned up. I mean, really I was, I was so cringe. I was like cringing when he said that. I was that was one of my moments. I'm like, I'm so out of this freaking thing. I just don't want to be unemployed. So, but yeah. Anyway, what, what was that spark? What was that like? I'm sure it's in your book. And I, I, I'm a lazy asshole. I, I want to physically. I will physically read your book. I never read books, being a millennial. So I wait for the audio. But I don't actually. Yeah. And it's, I travel, I'm, so it's like I have to get the book delivered. But yeah, I know. I'm more. I'm I'll working get to on LA uh, and then I'll buy, I, I'm sure I can. Well, if you want, I'll send you a, I'll send you a Kindle if you want to load it on an iPad or something. Oh, do yeah. That'll be, oh, right. You can do yeah, Kindle. Oh, yeah, right, I'll just send it to you. I'll, I'll, Kindle. I didn't think. Yeah, you can do that. You can do oh, that. Oh, perfect. So I'm going to, yeah. uh, so I, I obviously want to have you back on after I've digested that. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. And and I'm working on the audio book. Um, Good. So, I hope but, you do. Are you, are you narrating yourself? I assume. I am. Yeah. Smart. Which means I got a, a lot of retakes because I have my my voice is whatever. It's... Really, I think your voice. I think your voice is good. And somebody... yeah, but it's there's a lot of artifacts when you use a real sensitive mic. I have a lot. Whatever. I don't want to get into it, but I'm working at it, and it's actually coming out nice. I'm only I'm almost right. done with the seventh chapter out of twenty six, but it's starting to go much faster. It's it's really been awesome. a struggle because I mean I have to do everything. I'm recording it. I'm editing it. I'm right. You know, directing it. I'm performing it. It's just right. like ah. right, right. Right. That it's a, lot. a labor it's of love, but it's, it, it is a labor. Um, not any, not I, anymore. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done with everything yes. Scientology. My book, my audio book, my YouTube channel. I want to, I may rebrand it. I may change the name. Interesting. I'd like, okay. I'd, yeah, I'd like to talk to people about their mental health journey. I'd like right. to talk about people. I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, uh, how do you make a world in which there's less harm? How do we return? Right. How do we return to a state of kindness? Like, right. how do we kind of get these virtues back? I'd like much that. rather be right. talking about that than Smart. you know, yeah. you sure. know, than Leah, Leah Remini's trial or whatever. Right. Which I I wish all of that well, and it's it's sure. you know. It's well, I'll be covering great. that. You know, that's why I'm going to L.A. But right. Yeah, and I'll be watching you covering it. Right. So. I appreciate okay. it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. we should have we should grab a drink while you're out here. I'd love to. Yeah, please. That'd be great. Yeah, we'll um, do that. That would be good. I'm yeah. trying to be back by May 29th because there's a hearing. Uh, although, you know, Jacob Harkey, credit to him, has stolen a lot of my thunder. Uh, so he has been a great... Jacob? Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Doing uh, reporting for Tony Ortega still is. Um, oh, wow. So I didn't know that. I know Jacob. He, he's yeah. a good guy. I'm, I'm, I'm very just, good I'm, guy. 
Yeah, he's yeah. a really good guy. Very good guy. Um, yeah. So he's so he's on the ground. So I mean, he gives a lot of. Yeah. He was one of my earlier early supporters when I was writing my book. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good. Yeah, I think he knows how to make make the connections. <laughs> I'm I'm slightly jealous because he gets all Aaron's <laughs> thing. He's there, and I was so. And this is why you know I talked about the team. Why I don't think he actually cares because I was thinking, oh, I'll always be the guy to be on Aaron's thing because Jacob works with Tony Ortega and therefore he won't have Jacob on but Aaron's not right. like that and doesn't care. Not that we don't need, you know, I'm very, I, he's on the ground. No, he doesn't care. No, I mean, uh, it's just, there's no reason to care. Especially right, when you're right. trying to do four so, streams a day, right. you're not going to be right. splitting hairs but, like that. All right. But with some of the, so I yeah, Myers, his work is absolutely crucial. And I'll, I'll be joining him as well, though. I, you know, he, yeah. He's yeah. I mean, I think part of it is just that, uh, who's there? You know, Jacob, he's here and he's been at Great. the protest. Yeah. Somebody had a question good. about the protest. We never. Yes. What is your uh, view? I, I, it seems like you're supportive. I mean, we had a great run, not actual rundown of LRH birthday speech because everybody refused to actually want to listen to it, including in the comments, understandably. Yeah. But of course I had, you guys got along, had Shannon who did uh, a lot of the protesting in Chicago. Then I did some protesting in Chicago and, uh, also, if you want to check out my YouTube, I have an interesting story about a cannabis arrest that I uh, went through that I think Scientology might be responsible for. But oh, really? I don't. I, yeah, I, I guess I'll tell that story if you if you don't know it. It's a, it's a not that you. No, would. I didn't know that they got you busted for a joint. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm curious as to what what your opinion on this is. So well, I, I wouldn't might... put it, I wouldn't put anything past them. I was just grabbing something. Um, so listen, there's two levels of OSA. Okay. There's two right. levels. There's the clown car level. It's just a car full of clowns, right? And they're just idiots and they can't do anything right. And then there's this other level of OSA, which is really top level, like intelligence operatives uh, that Miscavige works with personally and that he pays. And most of them are like private uh, contractors. And those, those MFers can get some nasty shit done. They can nasty. get people arrested. So, really can't, but and right. Miscavige likes that there's this clown car level because it keeps everybody confused. And right. I've seen him in the room with the clown car people. He just screams at him nonstop. Right, and knows. So I mean, I'll I'll, I'll give you a very quick rundown. Uh, long story short, I fly into the the Chicago protest. You know, I'm traveling the continent, so I was in Atlanta at the time from New York. Right. But I uh, left the car and the dog a dog at a uh, somebody's house. Uh, flew from Atlanta to Chicago. One of the dudes, I was talking with Shannon about potentially storming the stage for Miscavige. Didn't happen. One of the dudes went up to me. He's like, hey, Dodge, you have warrants. I didn't have any warrants. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, you have warrants for crimes. And I'm like, for what crimes? He's like, you know, for crimes. So I thought that was bizarre, but didn't think anything of it. Flew back the next day. It was Super Tuesday and the primary is happening. So it's giving a live, live stream of the primary. And I stupidly said, I implied where I was staying. I was like, I'm at a golf course in suburban Georgia. And there's only one hotel at a golf course in suburban Georgia. Uh, right. So uh, an hour later, I run to get some fast food. And I'm listening to the radio. Car's off. So it's not like a DUI or anything. And I'm I'm smoking weed from a bowl, listening to the radio results. Cop knocks on my door. And I have... I have less than a quarter ounce with me. He searches the car and I'm booked for about 16 hours. Not only that, but that, that my parents had to call a million different people because they were told that I had bail. And then all of a sudden they said I had no bail. And then all of a sudden they had, they said I had bail again. And it was this very strange labyrinthian maze. You know, obviously the church of Scientology has a uh, church in Sandy Springs and has honored the police force. The last thing I'll note, which might be irrelevant is I got arrested in Cobb County and the Cobb County Sheriff in 2019 said he would instruct his officers to no longer arrest anybody for misdemeanor, uh, which minus misdemeanor for under an ounce uh, marijuana possession. So yeah, do you think, does Scientology, oh, would on, they care? On, Take on. your time. I don't know what happened. Um, hold on. You lost your video. I did, but it's going to come back in a minute. Here we go. Bummer. That's all right. There, there, there we go. Sorry about that. You're fine. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, they could have. Yeah, they could have. It's, you know, anything's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder why it's, they care about me, but, you know, I guess if I get 
an additional. Yeah, I mean, I would people. think. Yeah, but I mean, I would think that the kinds of operatives that have the ability to do that, they would be. They're pretty focused on very specific projects. So, who right. knows? But right. Uh, but I, I do start, wonder. I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, nothing else. Only that. Um, I'm scared because usually the 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 penalty is a slap on the wrist, but I wonder if the judge is going to be connected and all of a sudden I'll find myself. No, nah, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't overthink it. Um, okay, I wouldn't cool, overthink cool. it anyway, but somebody asked about the protest. I went to one protest. Yes. I was, so I was right, what's your out, feeling on that? I, I was handing out, I was handing out my handouts, you know, they hand out handouts cool. at the test center. So I did my own handouts, but anyway, um, yeah, no, I think yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think, yeah, we're yeah. Doing, yeah, no, I think I, I would like to do more, but I think it's kind of like, People were thinking that I was kind of inserting myself because I wanted to sell a book or something. So I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, are, isn't everybody inserting themselves or trying to get monetized and, and putting? Myself yeah, exactly, and exactly. But for some reason, and making but for money some reason, it, it's, so. yeah. But for some reason, it's not cool for me. And I was doing it because I felt. Yeah, I heard that really, criticism, and I was thinking that's kind of bullshit. Yeah, it was you're really weird, but it was total bullshit. Know, right, and you're trying to let people know of truths that people should know about. So, yeah, and plus I was joking. I, I made I, I did a little video and I named it me hawk me shamelessly hawking my book on Hollywood Boulevard because that's Pretty my so, right. sense of humor. That's right, my sense right, of humor. So that's right. I, I right. like but right. and, and then somebody said, look at that, he's even admitting it. It was I'm like, that's ah, right. it was crazy. That's it was crazy. Hilarious. But I love those kids. That's I love what they did. I, I'm, yeah, I'm proud I proud of them because yeah, and I think it's great what they're doing, and I wish there was a way I could support them by physically showing up. Like what? I I mean, I've been sure. protesting since I was five years old. My parents used right. to take me to anti-nuke marches. You know, my mother's got pictures Hilarious. of me. She had, yeah, like with pictures with hand in hand with Early Linus Pauling. You know, and then oh. in the in the against the Vietnam War and civil rights and the, right. like I was at so many demonstrations. But you know, I go to demonstrate against Scientology and I get criticized. So it's really weird. Yeah. And let me just say it's it did just, not feel good, but I, I, I wish I, I don't blame you. I, I'd like yeah. to find a way to support them more than I have. So, good. yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm extremely you, supportive. Is there anybody in this anti Scientology world who isn't supportive of the protesters? I'm trying to think of any. No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, Chris, Chris said what he said. He said what he said. He said, that was about it. Like, yeah. Like, who, who cares? I mean, who cares? I mean, the idea is like, it just makes the people that are inside the buildings looking out uh, at that. Yes. They're going to dig their heels in. Then they're going to think that everybody out there is just insane, but it's not for them in there because they're not going to leave until they've had right. enough abuse. It's for the people right. outside. It's yes. for the world so that the world doesn't get caught up in it anymore. Right. Right. I'm glad we explained that. And, and yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I, I was part of this, movement i mean we we entered the civil rights i mean we entered the vietnam war like sure. what protests don't Very work much. like what civil we rights right you know you know uh, the peaceful demonstrations in india under gandhi no this right. is a really important tool and and yeah they're getting monetized and you know i mean sure what's her name jessica you know i, I looked at her stuff and she was you know dropping dollar bills in the intersection on rodeo drive to see if anyone pick them up Right. Well, I you mean, know, her big shtick. I saw her before. Of her big shtick was, uh, "Can I be your sugar baby and go to these guys?" Yeah, like, she was doing all this stupid that's shit. What she was. So good on yeah, her. Yeah, I know. But then they're, they're I don't know like, if you she's know, intelligent what? enough to follow. I haven't seen any of her no, content because I'm just like, no. Because that girl, I talked, I, I, I talked to her. Fine. I mean, oh, I talked yeah, to her, right. and I talked, I talked to uh, Chris without a Hellcat. Who I thought was a great him. Guy. I like. She's the, literally the one I don't follow only because I'm prejudiced with her previous videos. And I'm thinking, if but she the thing is, videos, the thing is, she doesn't. Person. Yeah, but the thing is, the reason I'm I like them and I respect. Now. Yeah, but I like them right. and I respect them because right, cool. They yeah. made a decision that that's what they're going to stream. That they did, and, and it's, yeah, she's only they, getting more. I mean, she had she had a big audience. She didn't need to do this. She had a big audience with those type of videos. Yeah, she I didn't. Mean, so they're like, you know what? The, you know, it's it's like Ooh, you know what? Church of Scientology on. bad. Yeah, right. like let's do something good with this. I mean, you know, right. She right. before she was just being a prankster, right? That's what I right right. And now it's and she's she's brought six digits of followers into this into this. Yeah, movie. I mean, I didn't. I watch. Her. Yeah, yeah the, exactly. So I, I, I've I, watched I, Chris Chris without a Hellcat. Really interesting. Uh, Danny and Lee have been doing great work. 
in LA as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I I liked his stuff a lot. I think he's a good guy. Yeah. I'll probably go down there and spend some time. I don't know. I have a couple of friends. Too, I'll let town. you know. I'll I'll be I'll be down there as well. So yeah, I'll go uh, down. Maybe you and I'll go down there. Love maybe that, yeah. we'll, we'll maybe, cool. maybe we'll grab Jeffrey and go down there. Jeffrey's always a that lot of fun. fun. Yes, to hang yes. out. Uh, yeah, and I think yeah. he would go with us. Then I have a couple cool. of friends coming over from UK um, awesome. in May, and then we're gonna go and do yeah. some stuff and. Oh, perfect. And so, yeah. yeah, we'll do some things. Yes, and, no, and like, yeah. I'd like to make myself available to any of them if they want to do an interview. Um, and I'm not yeah. saying that because yeah. I want the FaceTime with any of them. But, I, you know, because I know, what's his name? Uh, the, the Defender of Ants, DOA. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody sent me a message. Go down and find him. He wants to interview you. But I wasn't able to hook up cool. with him because he he just gotten out of prison. Uh, not prison. He's just gotten out of jail. and. Because he got a yeah, he got well, they nailed set him days. up with a bunch of weird stuff too. Yeah, which is why yeah. I was wondering my situation. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So and I ha and I have a bunch of more tickets. I'd like to go hand them out. So yeah, please, yeah, definitely, so. definitely. I think you guys definitely should connect. And he <laughs> yeah. has. I mean, these these numbers are just gangbusters. And some of these people are far surpassing my YouTube just for being out there for you know hours upon hours. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And more power to them as, as they should. Uh, so, um, yeah, and as Susan says, the protests are to draw attention to the international criminal human trafficking, money laundering family, money laundering, family shattering cult of Scientology. Yeah, yeah. I have to add one thing to that. I have to really add one thing to that list, which is identity stealing, because the most dangerous thing, science, it can't do any of those things that are listed there without stealing a person's identity. That's the first thing right. on the list. So before you yes. can do any of that other stuff, you have to steal their identity. So uh, I, I don't mean like steal their social security number and their passwords. I mean, literally take their story of what they can seem conceive of themselves as and replace it with something else. Then you really right. got them. Yes. Yes. You yeah. Take, take that validity. But it, it, I, I do wonder what will, it's, it's kind of adorable that there are these, staff member i guess because they're not sea org right or are they see they're not sea org the people who well it depends them. where i mean the test center in la test those center. guys are sea org no. they yeah, are they're sea -org. Okay, right. yeah they are right but and they're you, dressed in the official uniforms right yeah but the org in chicago oh. where you were with shannon and right that, those are those are not sea org they're staff they're just Standing, public right. stuff that's interesting so la is prestigious enough where they do a sea org and then the rest of them yeah uh, yeah, I mean the LA org, the yeah, everything on L Run Hubbard Way is 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 all C org. I bet New York probably has C orgs at their Times Square. Uh, I don't know. I mean that is a class five org, huh. so that would uh yeah, that's interesting. So that's I the I wonder if stars will be made adding any of those C org members like Sebastian, who everybody seems to No, they got rid of them. I think they moved them. I think they just moved oh, them. They, they are <laughs> yeah, Sebastian, I I don't know. I don't I haven't been following it that closely, but I know they got they him. They should get out that. because they, they realize some of them are celebrities in this world. And some, I know, Sebastian, I know. They can they could leave and start a channel. It would just be the weirdest, like you know, Anyone when Andy Warhol Yes. Yeah, I mean, when Andy Warhol said, you know, in the future, everyone will have 50 minutes of fame, he, like, had no idea. I mean, like, he was, that was so wasn't prescient he, what he said. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he was wasn't just right. beyond right, so. That's funny. Yeah. No, it's so, yeah, I think we, 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 I should say, we should probably wrap this up soon, because I got to. Yes, dog is, uh, dog is going to go, so. Yeah, I think, we've I've been, been on for, for 2.15, a long time. Um uh, but thank you for making the time. You're fast. I could I could ask you questions endlessly. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do it again. I mean, maybe we could just if we could if we could try to keep it to an hour, hour and a half, we could do one weekly. Yeah. Well, I'll do a better job of keeping it almost singularly or two topic focused, perhaps. Yeah, Cause yeah, because there's still a lot of stuff we can we can touch yes. on. Yes, I mean, I can I can ask a million different questions. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so we'll we'll keep it like a tight hour, hour and a half, but yeah, hell of yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. We'll thank you. Thank you for everything. Yeah. It's always too. great to see you Dodge. I really enjoy Likewise. our conversations a lot. Me too. Me too. And uh, I really appreciate everybody who came by, even those yeah. of you who were maybe a little, little critical and that was, Hey, you have questions. I know, but it, yeah, but I'm, I, I think I, I, I'm, you know, I, it's, I'm weird because I will always kind of like find who in the room hates me the most. That's the person I want to talk to. You know, right. so <laughs> Uh, of course, so anyway. and, and you're you're rel. You know, I've been on YouTube really for 
before Scientology, before any, I've had my YouTube for eight years. So wow. the me, like any direct negative, it's almost, and then I was a news anchor, local TV right. news anchor. So right. you know, half the comments were, who's this disgusting redhead with uh, the smoker's <laughs> yellow teeth that they're right about. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, they're not wrong. So, but it, you know, it eventually it flushes through you if you have a thick enough skin, but that takes about a year or two years. Then, yeah. You know? That's what it took and me. Then, then you have fun with them and it's kind of funny, but yeah. Um, takes a moment and that's why mine is radically open in my youtube and you know uh yeah i thought you handled each quite each each of the consternations though i'm glad we brought them up because i think you address them very uh very effectively and to really dispel yeah. you know a lot of a lot of unnecessary gripes that shouldn't be gripes to begin with but well i tell you I, I, one last thing that i really have to say when i when i first got onto youtube i thought when i first left scientology and i got into youtube i thought we were all on the same team i thought we'd all been through hope. whatever i thought we'd all been to whatever we went through and and now right. we're, we're all on one team and we're gonna right. and then all of a sudden i was enough. i was like oh i i felt like i was in ethics trouble and i was back in scientology <laughs> It was really bizarre. So I learned that when we are on the same team, but there's some different things going on. So like I said, yeah, like I said, I, I want to focus on uh, healing from abuse because I think okay. that's for me, that's the only meaningful purpose is to focus on that one thing. As I said, whether it's cultic abuse or relational abuse. And I'm glad you um, brought it out. Right. And that's the last thing is I, I don't know how Aaron could do eight videos a day. It's just like, you know, for me, and I, I'll lose some subscribers, I'll gain as well. But like, I went to New Hampshire, covered the primaries, did my own political thing. Scientology is where yeah. the bread and butter is. But there's nothing, right. you know. I think the more interesting YouTube videos, like I like uh, Vanessa LaRose, for example, who's talked about Scientology. Yeah. Who I've had on. She has a lot of videos about yeah. mental health, which are interesting. You know. Yeah. Because you know she has experience, right? She's like, oh, she has experience in Scientology. She's also experienced with trauma, and now she's getting education in mental health. So those. Those videos are from an expert, just like you know you talk. Yeah, about. she left Scientology and got a degree in, in as a psychologist. Right. She's amazing. Exactly. Right. Right. So, and for me, you know, I was ran for office once upon a time and was in New York City politics and 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 played right. that game and, and was local. So, you know, I I hope and some people have commented that because of my experience, I add a unique niche commenting on politics. Uh, right. uh, but it's. That's going to be a thing too. You branched out. You're first going to lose some some some, some subscribers because they'll be mad that right. it's like, well, I only want you for Scientology. Some are so dislike you doing something they'll actually take the initiative to unsubscribe. But then you'll get a whole cadre of new people uh, who are investing. Yeah, well, I've I've thought about rebranding my channel to be not about uh, it, right. Yeah, I've thought of rebranding it and just calling it, um, but seriously, Mitch. <laughs> so. <laughs> I like that. Only because <laughs> there's reasons why we take things so seriously. There's re exactly. and we all need, we all need to stop doing that because it's just yes. like like things got way too serious on YouTube, uh, and it was literally yes. starting to interfere with my mental health. And I took a little break right. to do other yeah. things. Like I I, you know I did I I brought a friend of mine on who you know read her resignation letter who had grown up in Scientology and. I cool. did some things that I thought were worthwhile, but it's like, and right. I'm, I'm going to come back and do more stuff. So listen, I want to, so what day are you going to be here? Uh, I will be here May 25th. So I got okay, some great. time. Okay, great. Cause I, I'm in Louisiana now, so I got to drive all the way out there. Although I, I know. Oh I'm man, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm green with envy. You're in Louisiana. Thank are you. you going through New Orleans? I love Louisiana. Yes, I will. I, just, I can't wait because I'm going to protest in Austin. So I'm going to do about four days in New Orleans. Oh, great. Yeah, I haven't been there in a long time, but I've, I've spent a bit of time in New Orleans. I just oh, I love cool. New Orleans. This beautiful city is not. I haven't been in about. Yeah, it's years. the best. It's just um, the best. Yeah, I oddly enough, I'm stayed. I used to live in. I lived in Shreveport on the opposite end of Louisiana for yeah, uh, right, right. three months. I entered for the mayor because my dad did some governmental work. Uh, but yeah, it's like the more famous, you know, I'm ex I haven't. But even all that time up there, I never went down to New Orleans. So that'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's why I'm trying to do this. I love, I, you know, traveling is is my addiction. You know, I've been to 48 right. states in the U.S. and 27 states in Mexico and six provinces in Canada. So I have this weird, I can't, it's like I'm a modern day drifter. Like I can't stop 
traveling and seeing different places. And it has to be like my land. It can't like I have much less interest in Europe and whatever. So yeah, yeah. I'll be I'm working with an anti Scientology person. She's out in Baton Rouge. So stay tuned for that because I'm going to do some protesting okay. in Baton Rouge. Will I uh, definitely and, will. Appreciate it, and to the audience as well. And then I'll be out in uh, Austin. Yeah, Texas. maybe I'll have you guys on my channel, and I'll interview you. Dude, that I love that. Fun. Thank you. That'll yeah, be a lot of fun. Yeah. fun. Yeah. Okay. I'll, good. I'll so uh, cool. we're gonna say good night. Yes. Love you guys. I, think it's I mean, about time. The, yeah, I, I really appreciate you all coming by, and this is fantastic. This is a lot Thank of fun. Thank you, guys. It's great to talk to you. Thank you. This is a personal. You know, I feel like it's. I'm having my own personal podcast because I've listened to you before, and I'm a big fan of yours. So. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's just yeah. as fun for me as it was for the audience. So. Yeah, you were going to ask me questions from the uh, podcast I did, so we should we'll, yes. we'll get to that. Well, those time. are most of the questions that I got. Oh, okay, uh, good. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. But there's still some more because I I listened to it. I I want to say it's what much as two weeks ago, and then mm -hmm. uh, it was the whole thing, and then I listened to like the first quarter of it today. So uh, yeah, yeah, I was really happy yeah. with it. I thought he did a great job. Yeah, yeah, very much. So thank you. You're the best for making the time. Really interesting. Food you're welcome. For Much appreciated. Keep on fighting. And yeah, what you're doing is super important and exposing the truth. So you have yeah, you too. Ally. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. You, you too. I hope I, I look forward to seeing you in person. Likewise. Looking forward to meeting you. Take care, Mitch. You're the best. Au Thank revoir. You, you too. Good night. Good night.